This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Elevate 08 and Offbeat, designing the highest quality merch and throwing the highest quality events. Make sure to check out their website at elevate08designs.com to see all of their upcoming events and to get in on exclusive merch drop. Elevate 08 and Offbeat are going nationwide this year with their events, so make sure to be on the lookout for all their upcoming dates. And believe me when I say these are not parties that you want to miss. They are so much fun. And once again, thank you to Elevate 08 and Offbeat for sponsoring this week's episode of the podcast. Now, to the episode. Yo, what's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, a Happy New Year's. Hope it was all great, man. Um, you know, I'm excited for this new year. Excited to be off the road, getting back to making tunes, doing a lot of stand-up, and just having a good time. And I uh, appreciate y'all coming back this year. Really looking forward to another year of doing this show and getting to sit down and talk to interesting people like I have on today. All right, my guest today is somebody who's a dear friend of mine, somebody I have a lot of love for. Um, he is a label owner. He is a um, mentor, a leader, um, and just an all-around angel of a human being. Um, I love this guy so much, and I cannot begin to express uh, my gratitude for this man, for all the things he's done for me in my life and my career, and just uh, overall knowledge. And, um, man, legendary human being, somebody I've wanted on this show for a while, somebody I've wanted on this show for a while, and we finally fucking got him, y'all. Starting this year off with a bang, banger of a guess. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Liquid Stranger. Martin. Mitch. <laughs> what the fuck is good, boy? We doing it, son. I want it to be your most elusive guest. I don't even know what that means, bro. You got to use words that I know. Well, look it up. All right. <laughs> Kyle, can <laughs> you look here. it up on that? <laughs> we have it back there for that. Do you want to drink, dude? Am I making you want to? I'm drinking my jar, but it's already prepped. I know, but you told me you were like, look, I'm at your place. You should be making me drinks. I'll have a drink then. Cool. Have a little drink, Epoo. Donald Duck. Yeah, it's not my orange juice, so make sure to Looks repay like my shit. repay my uh, roommates on that one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got a little little bit of that uh, sweetness on the finger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Duck sponsored. Hey, cheers, my dude. Thank cheers. you for being here today. This is one I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Hmm. Mm. So, oh, it's sour. Yeah, just like my bussy. Uh, how are you doing today, dude? This is the last weekend of the Dimensions tour. Mm -hmm. How you feeling about it, dude? Like usual, pretty tired. Yeah, but when you do these things for long enough, and I think you could agree, like you turn into a machine a little bit. Mm -hmm. You got to. So a tired machine. Yeah. So basically, like an old PC, you know, like mm -hmm. Windows, you yeah. know, running on the damn dial up. Exactly. Yeah, but it still couldn't get the job done. You just wait a second. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell. Dude, so, you know, you are one of the craziest dudes I know. Just because, like, one of the busiest. Because, like, we did the balance tour, which was a two-month bus tour in the beginning of the year. During the pandemic. During the pa used to add on. I know, dude. And I'm so craziness. jealous. I'm so jealous of y'all's tour now where y'all are able to just hang out and have well, a good time. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it's more normal and less isolated. Yeah. And, you know, part of being on tour for me is also uh, creating relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, I think it's even more important than before to vet people pro pro properly. Yeah. And so, it, it, yeah, it's more natural for sure. Yeah. The tour we went on was weird. It was. It was dope. It was a lot of fun, dude. I mean, honestly, like... I'll talk about it to people. I'm like, you know, we couldn't go do nothing, but luckily everyone on the bus was fucking a joy to be around. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that it wasn't that bad, you know. No, I know. You got a good crew. Yeah, I have 
a very, very good career. And that's something that uh, I've actually put in a lot of work into. Building a team is tricky, but rewarding mm -hmm. when you get it. Can you bring it just a little bit closer to yeah. you? Yeah. Cool. You're good, yeah. Like this? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Now it's going to come through clear as hell. Yeah. But you now, watch... Yeah, that is better. Yeah, watching you, like... It was watching you on the balance tour, like it, it really opened my mind to like, cause you, it's cool. Cause everywhere you go, you bring an audio tech, you bring a guy for lasers, guys for visuals. And it's like, you know, bringing a whole team that's just there to make the set a, like its own thing. It's like, that was really inspiring and cool to see. Cause I'm like, yo, it's, that's a point that, you know, every artist dreams of getting to, but it was really my first time seeing it night after night, just having a whole crew. They go everywhere with you. It's also kind of a healthy thing I think for myself Liquid Stranger is a brand and I am the face of it since I'm the prettiest so I'm not the smartest <laughs> I don't so know dude Zipper's pretty hot uh, he's hot <laughs> in its own way but he's especially really good at audio and he's Canadian so you know But <laughs> he t my point is like having a team where each person takes their duty as seriously as we do the music part that's special and it does make a much better show. And then it's a fine balance between, you know, not micromanaging too much. Mm. You trust the guys to do a good job. Yeah. I mean, I don't trust is a finicky word. Mm. I have faith in people, but I don't trust anything, anytime. Don't trust anywhere. these hoes, boy. Blind trust, I don't think is healthy. No, it ain't. I trust family, a couple mm -hmm. close friends. But even family, all humans can fuck up. So I'd say I'd like to have, I have faith in you, Mitch. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll take it. And I have faith in my team. Okay. They're very handpicked, but no, it, it, it creates a much better show. And it, um, I think it, it's good not to take oneself to them seriously. Like I'm just a part in Liquid Stranger, which has now become something way bigger than myself. mm and I like things that way. Mm. Like all my interests that I'm really passionate about are like bottomless wells. You can never, how are you going to master music? You can't. Anytime you think it's like, I got this. Yeah. That's slippery slope. And then someone like you comes along and masters their song. Like, how do you get it so loud and crisp and stuff? You know, just, you know, throwing shit at the wall, banging my head against it as well. <laughs> you know, shit like that, dude. <laughs> dude, but you being do you though? Do you do you get like frustrated? <sighs> no, I used to. I do. Yeah, I used to. Now I have a really healthy relationship with like I, I don't have any expectations on myself going to a studio. Whenever I have a session, my session is to just have fun, explore, and if it's cool, if I think it's cool, then that's it. You know, every music piece of music I've put out is because I thought it was cool. You know, you, you can kind of hear that in your songs. Like, you're extremely skillful. I don't believe in talent. I mm. believe in skills. Skills are earned. I don't and know, bro. You have worked hard on this. You got to. It's easy to tell. I get frustrated, though. Yeah. I get frustrated easily. Do you have a uh, healthy, like, because I have a healthy relationship where if it ain't working, I'll just walk away and go do things I enjoy oh, yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. But, and I also don't think that frustration is necessarily a bad thing. It's more like a compass. Like I'm also Swedish. We're known for being jealous and I'm definitely a jealous person. But if you use that as a compass, you know, an emotional compass for this is what I want, this is what I desire. As long as you don't act like an asshole about it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. True. And f my frustration definitely helps me work harder and get better. Like, I didn't grow up in an environment where people were stoked about me making electronic music. Like, I never, there was, it was weird, man. You it know still is weird, you know? Yeah, and uh, it maybe it has a little bit of a stigma, but I, you know, in the 80s when I started, it's, you know, it's not real music if it's not strings vibrating and you just. I need some banjo, you know? You know what I mean, though? <laughs> yeah. All those things. If I wouldn't have been a. If I would have been more timid, it's like, oh, yeah, I know you're right. That's very naive of me to think that I'm going to be able to do something with this. Of course, you're right. I should just do something more conventional. Um, then I probably wouldn't have done this. Did but I'm the type of person who goes, oh, 
fuck you. I'm going to show you yeah. motherfuckers. That we was can a- cuss on this podcast, right? Oh, or we're going to have a huge problem. Shit, goddamn it, hell, motherfucker. We say what the hell we want, bro. I have bro. a potty mouth. I do too, man. You've been around me. Yeah, I was about to ask if, like, because, you know, me personally, when someone says I shouldn't do or say certain things, all it wants to make me do is go fucking do that thing mm-hmm. and just prove them off. I like that chip on my shoulder. I need it. I used to be more like that when I was younger, but... I feel you. Yeah. I'm probably a little bit still like that. Do you think your frustration in the studio comes from pressure? Because, like, you are Liquid Stranger, right? There's a there's a um, precedent of quality that you have to put out. Like, I don't think that you could pull out. Like, I don't know. I'm from, like, I feel like from a point of view, I feel like once you get it in a certain level, you're like, all right, this song is kind of whatever. Like, I don't know if you can put that out anymore at that point. Do you think that frustration comes from, like, the pressure of quality of where something needs to be? I can see where you're coming from. I think I've always been a frustrated person because if I think back on my life, everything that I've accomplished, and I think it comes from like, <clears throat> I don't think I'm, I don't really believe in talent, but I, today. Yeah. Um, and so I can truly say that I didn't really have a knack for any of these things. Like I'm not particularly great at making music. I'm not particularly good at martial arts or speaking English, but then, that frustration comes in and it pushes me farther. And I think that's just how I am as a person. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm a rude person because this is more like how I deal with myself. Mm. But it's a lot of cowboy up. It, my internal dialogue is has a lot to do with that. I think I disagree with you a little bit though, dude. You're good at making music. I th- you're like a black belt in martial arts. You don't get that for being not good. I got that from working exactly. harder than everyone else around me. Though That's my point. And that's like, if I can say anything, maybe encouraging to the people listening who, you know, because it's like maybe people look up to like what you just said. Oh, it's so big. Well, it didn't start like that. Right. And I think just keeping your head down and working really hard and going through that frustration is like, how do you do this? You know, and that's very much me. Yeah. I heard this quote the other day uh, and it was like 1% of the people make it. And it's 1% of those people who work really hard. It's like the many are called, but few are chosen principle. Yeah. But how, 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 how hard are you going to, how, what are you willing to give up to get it? Like in a sense you have to be like, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to die for this. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those things like you got to have whatever art or whatever you're into. If you're trying to make it doing that, you got to kind of be willing to die for that thing. And I think that exactly, it needs to be that important and that will just spark you, force you to work a lot harder. The harder I work, the luckier I seem to be. Yeah. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in talent. I believe in hard work and it seems to pay off. And even if I, that's my point, like I wasn't, you know, I was like the shortest guy in class and I started with martial arts when I was six because I didn't want to get beat up every day in school. Yeah. It wasn't very glamorous. Yeah. But then I stuck with it. And when I came to America, I started over as a white belt um, for my mentor, Soka Reagan, who I studied under mostly here. But quite quickly, I started earning ranks because I was just in the dojo all day, seven days a week. When everyone else went home, I just stayed. I was there first of everyone. I was, And if you apply that, you know, and I guess it comes from some type of passion too, obviously. But if you apply that, even some days you're not going to feel like it. It's the same with like touring anything, you know. You got to have that little extra oomph. That grit. And for me, it comes from frustration. Yeah, dude, you got to have that fire under your ass. But I'm at peace with that. Yeah. I love my frustration. I mean, it kind of relates. Like, it makes me think, because I'm a big sports guy, it makes me think of Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, there's, like, great examples from boxing, MMA, you know, all the, all the all those athletes. Yeah. yeah, Michael Jordan, they said he wasn't good enough to be on the varsity team in high school. And all he did every hmm. day was practice basketball. And now he's the greatest basketball player of all time. I didn't know that. I don't know a lot about American sports, but I can tell you this. When I came over to America, I never played basketball. And I saw the hoop and I was like, dude, this looks so easy. I'm going to like <laughs> crush it so hard. And then I tried it. It's like, oh, oh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, so I started. I got play- very humbled. I started playing basketball when I moved here, so I've been playing for about six months, and it's, it's Dude, a it's hard. It's a man. brand new love. I, I I I I love it. I fucking love it. I think about it every day, and uh, I have a rec center a block from me. And I started playing, but I started playing with teenagers, and they would just smoke my ass, non sexually, of course, but they would fuck me <laughs> up, dog. You know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that it wasn't sexual. Yeah, dude, you know. <laughs> I got worried there. For a second. Good. Like, I have good defense. They'll be like, good D, Mitch. I'm like, I don't know if you should say that. Maybe wait a couple years, you know? <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> we fucking around, dude. Yeah. But, gotta. dude, but I wanted to bring it up because, like, A, you're one of the busiest dudes I know. So you had the balance tour, then you had festival season, and it was like every festival wanted Liquid Stranger, Wakan Fest, and now you're on the Dimensions tour, mm-hmm. and you have you just released an EP, and you have another one coming out, so Squan, are you, do you have time to sit down and just smell the fucking roses, dude? Like no, and I don't, <laughs> and I, I and I don't want to. Yeah, I prefer to be busy. Yeah, it's a better life. Keep busy, stay busy. That's uh recipe for a healthy martin well what type of like do you have time for a personal martin do you have time to just now like so me i have a lot of loves outside of music i have things i like to go do i have things that mitch really loves Mm -hmm. and it took me a while to figure out what those things were and how to balance taboo and mitch do you have those things for martin and do you even have time for those things anymore yes but for me my biggest love is making music and the rave culture. I got into rave culture when I was 13 and that's back in 1989. And I finally found, it wasn't even the music, it was the inclusivity. The vibe. And we could talk about this from a lot of different angles because I don't feel like the scene has really been like that lately. It's painful to me. But my humble origins was coming in as a very young person and finally finding a place where it didn't matter if you were white or black or fat or which sexual orientation you had, we could all come together. Um, that is a very strong love for me and it, it pushes me. So I work a lot, but it feels so natural. It's the thing I want to do. Yeah. That is my biggest interest. Yeah, I do martial arts. I train bunch when i'm at home um i uh i have a lot of silly interests that i do i build little diorama landscapes I, diorama I, dioramas okay i don't it's know it's like miniature nature got basically. you okay cool but it's all artificial so i build it with like static grass and plants and stuff and cool. then like Legos, but with real yeah. life shit. I spray paint. I paint miniatures. I am one of those nerdy people who like Warhammer 40K. Mm. So building little miniatures and painting them really well and then playing with my friends and stuff. I have a ton of interest outside of this. Mm. But I do think the biggest, like, that's why both we've devoted our life to this culture mm-hmm. for better or worse, you know? Mm-hmm. I'll be here. It's my duty. It's important. Yeah. You know, and the more I go, new challenges, like learning how to be a better leader. Those things are super exciting to me. Mm. You said two things there that I want to touch on. You said when you got into it, it was really like inclus- inclusive. Was that the word you used? Yeah. Okay. And you said you don't feel like it's been like that lately. Do you feel like it's been like that in real life or do you feel like it's just been like that on the internet? Good question. I think that any culture that starts with a very small, little passionate grassroots following, which rape culture was, um, it's kind of easy to keep it light and friendly. Yeah. And nowadays, I mean, and I think this is great, and I think this person in particular, Shaq is who I'm thinking about. It seems like an awesome guy. God, he's but the he's coolest. a dubstep DJ now. How, who would have thought? Bro, you know? he is uh, the coolest dude yes. ever. My point being, though, that now this culture is mainstream. Mm. We have all the hot models coming in. We have all the cool, smart people. And in the beginning, it was just very passionate, artistic people. And that's not the case anymore. I think the biggest difference I saw, difference I saw was during the pandemic, and I think it's just because people were stuck with all their own feelings and dread, and it needs to come out somewhere. 
Yeah. So that's where social media became a lot darker and where I just took my departure. Like, I'm not going to play those games. Yeah. You will not be able to get hold of me anymore. Yeah. Which is a sad thing for me because I'm very personable and I love my listeners. Like, that's my base family and I truly mean that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, got to behave properly, yeah. man, or... It just becomes... You just said man with a southern accent. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, do that on pur- did you do that on purpose? I did it on purpose. Nice. <laughs> Almost everything I do on purpose. Oh, damn. So intentional with you. I am very intentional. Yeah. yeah. So that's something I think about all the time because I hear like I hear other artists talk about it. They're like, man, it's just been so weird lately. And I, I, I agree and disagree at the same time. I'm like, it's weird but on the internet. But if you sit down and talk with people or just interact with people... We're still fucking people. That's why what we're doing right now, I think, is the antidote. Yeah. Because Twitter, 140 characters, it's not going to work. It's Don't have arguments or such on Twitter. It's just never going to work it's out. It's fun sometimes. But this is a long-form conversation where we could even start somewhere and I could disagree with you and then learn in the process and say, whoa, I hated the color yellow, but now I feel better about it after we talked about it. Yeah, that's I uh, used this exact example before, but it was right in front of me here. Um, I think that's the beautiful thing with the podcast, and I think we need more things like this yeah. where people can sit and actually be able to express themselves fully in mm. full sentences. It's not just a little sound bite where you cut together all the worst parts of a human being or the <laughs> best, but it's more honest. Yeah, and so I think what you're doing is very great, and that's also hey, I don't. You know, I'm an introverted person, but this is important for me to sit here with you. I think it is important, man. Like being able to actually express yourself and talk about things. I've had guests on this show where we don't agree on certain things. We're totally different people, but we can still sit here and have mutual respect and talk. And that in itself, I think, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. That's real life. You don't have to agree. Yeah, no. Like how boring would it be if we were all just exactly the same? That would suck, dude. It would. It would be so boring. It would. So born? Born. Boring. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sure. You know what I'm saying, God damn it, dude. Don't I wasn't <laughs> sure, but I guess I did. So you say born? Born. 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 That's Louisiana coming, spooking around. Yeah, dude, a little bit of that Mississippi, <laughs> Louisiana vibe from I you. love it. I yeah. love your accent. You remind me of uh, Theo Vaughn. I hear it all the time. Yeah, because you're kind of similar. You could be best friends. You should hit them up. We should be best friends. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really think it would be possibly, but um, no, nah, man, I I agree with you on that. Like, no one, it, it we lose a lot when everyone thinks the same. Oh yeah, I mean for sure we lose any hope of real progress. Yes, you need to disagree. You need to question things. And music is kind of like that too. I, I feel like it's something that. Sometimes it's good to have another person's opinion about yourself, like Loper, our manager. He's both my manager and yours. Yeah, he's um, an okay dude. He's also <laughs> very good at giving um, honest feedback that I wouldn't expect to hear. Oh, he's a, he's king at it. He'll just let you know, bro. But one thing that he says about me is like, hey, one thing I like about you, Martin, is that you go against the grain. That's not even something I ever think about, but musically, maybe a little bit, because I do not want to repeat myself. And I know there are certain trends, and I try not to play into them at all, because it's the same thing there. The more diversity we get, the the better. Well, it's like a new guy who comes with, like, a new style, right? Like, it's like with, like, Skrillex or even, like, Peekaboo. They Mm -hmm. came with, like, something that no one else was doing, and they did it in a fun, fresh way, just thinking a little different, and then watched what that inspired and just put out there for everyone to, you know, how many artists were birthed because of that. It goes back to, like, rock and roll, like, Kiss or, like, Metallica. They hear these new guys, and they're like, whoa, now I'm going to pick up a guitar or, or some drumsticks, and, you know, like, it just inspires, you know, a whole new wave of generational artists, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. And it's just from people thinking different and seeing things in a different way. So that part I'm still very passionate about trying to pioneer new fields of what we're doing and not get stuck. So you're speaking about diversity or us being different. I think that's a huge 
plus. Well, I think that's why Wakan is at where it's at, you know, for you putting where on. Where is it at? It's, it's at the top, my dude. It's doing pretty good. I don't know if you've noticed. I don't pay attention to it so much. Good. Maybe that's a good thing. But I it's like doing, hearing you say that. Yeah, but it's, it's doing pretty good, I'd like to say. Um, but that was the thing. Like, I remember the first time I listened to Wakan. I heard artists from Wakan. It was like a compilation y'all did. And I remember hearing it, and I was like, this is cool as fuck. Like, all this music's so unique and different. I hadn't heard anything about that. And I think that's why Wakan stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. You said something a minute ago, and I wanted to touch on it. You said being a leader. You know, starting Wakan and being the face of Wakan and Liquid Stranger, maybe... I don't know if like if you're a natural born leader, but having to become one, being the face of all, of all of this, has that been something that's been difficult for you? Has that been like a something that you didn't want and it's just forced into? What's that been like for you? Just kind of stepping in the role of like you know, like you and I are friends, but like you you are the helm of this. You know what I mean? Like, I know you don't think of yourself like that. You like to feel like we're just one family and, and we're all good. And that's amazing. I love that you think that way, but there's still always a leader of any army, any family, any, any team, there's team leaders, there's captains. So what has that been like for you transitioning into that? And was that something that you were ready for from the jump? I don't think there is such a thing as being a natural anything. Again, I don't believe in talent. Gotcha. I think it's just skill set. So I sucked at it and have had to learn. And I'm still learning. I think martial arts helped me a lot. You learn how to direct a room and you learn. And that's every time I go on stage, those words ring in my ear. If you're going to be the leader, you're going to be the martial arts you know, instructor, you have to be 20% more intense than everyone else in the room. Yeah. So that's like just a measuring stick. You just need to put yourself on that level. And it's difficult and you can't do all of it maybe at once. So it's definitely a work in progress and training. Um, now I don't think there are any natural born leaders and it's all of the things that you said, you know, it's something that I was forced into or forced myself into. I mean, I speak Swedish. I didn't speak English coming to this country a little bit, you know, like. Yeah. Like howdy. Yeah. Yeah. That sounded Y'all. Yeah. yeah. You know, reckon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just about acquiring those skills. And I believe for most part, like you learn the best by doing, at least for me, like experiences. Yeah. You just got a trial by fire, jump in there and start doing it. And then you get better at it. So what you're saying is don't go to school, get out there and work. I think it's very <laughs> dumb to go to school and yeah, rip up a bunch dude. of uh, student loans unless you've figured out the step that comes before. Because if you want to manifest something, there are always four steps. And the first step is focus. Mm. That is being able to pinpoint what you truly want and be as quantifiable and specific about it as possible. Um, without that guiding principle and path, you have no clue where you're going. So in your example, I want to be a performing artist and I truly want to speak my message to the maximum amount of people possible and bring more laughter and happiness into the world. Am I pretty on point there for you? Well, if yeah, you raise hell, praise Dale. We gotta add that in there, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, step number one. <laughs> and, and and truly, for for anyone listening, like this is how I do to manifest what I want into my life. You gotta go to that first step and be very honest with yourself and challenge yourself to be as specific, the more specific and it makes sense, right? The more precise and specific you can be, the more specific results you're going to get. Mm. It makes sense. So that's the first step. What do you want? Be specific. Make it quantifiable. Put a number on it. And the difference between a goal and a date, or a goal and, and a, a dream, dream is yep. that the goal has a date. I got a goal board right up there. You ain't got to read them out loud, it's but yep. Big butt with a strawberry on it. Nah, not that, dude. It does say butt <laughs> stuff on the goal board, but yeah. 
Then the second step would be skills and abilities. That's when you go to school, but you better know what you're going to school for. Yes. Make sense now? So yeah, don't go to school to just, you know, I'm not going to Ole Miss just to fucking get well, tail and party, you know? I, well, you could do that without <laughs> tracking up like a $40,000 student loan. True. Just go there on the weekends and have a good time. Well, that's my point. Like, be, be, it's it's good to have your things thought out before you go to the next step. following steps. Third step, by the way, is get off your ass and just work. Yep. You know, we know that step. Like that, usually, the first step and the fourth step tends to be the most challenging for people, including myself. It's like getting bearings of okay, precisely what it is. What is it that I'm going for? And skills and abilities and the actual work. It's usually it just comes out of that naturally. Like, make it makes sense. Mm. But the fourth step is surrender. And that sounds so flaky or kind of like uh, superstitious, almost like hand it over to the universe and let the universe work for you. You sound like my buddy Andre. Uh, so let me not sound like your buddy Andre, <laughs> but put it in a more practical context. If I, you work on a song, eventually that song needs to be finished because before then the people won't hear it and it won't work for you, right? So you got to come to some type of completion. But completion doesn't mean the end. It's like then if you drop a pebble in the water... There are nine rings that come out, and the tenth completion goes back in again. Have you thought of that? No, I didn't know how many rings. I ain't counting them. I'm usually just trying to throw that bitch and get a big splash. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or like the, what do you call this? Skipping. Yeah, skipping. Yeah, skipping. I did a lot of that as a kid. I'm good at it. Yeah, I skipped school. Or I know. used to be good at it. Yeah. Well, I skipped rocks on the surface of the water. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It has yeah. nothing to do with school. I know, but I'm just it's saying school I did in skip itself, school, yeah. Getting as many skips as you possibly can. Yeah. Won't get you out of school. No. But what we're saying is don't go unless you have purpose and focus but and you intention. Can get, you can get these flat rocks really far out. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. It is impressive, dude. You see someone fucking throw that thing across the pond, you're like, God damn, that dude's got talent. Well, you don't I want in. this person on my team. Yeah, that's dude. Co join Wakan right now, dude. Yep. That's <laughs> the that's what I always do. Take them to the shore and then like says, Oh, only twenty bounces. Mm. Pussy. Mm, okay. Yeah. Pussy. Yeah. That's <laughs> not gonna work. Dude, it's uh, not gonna cut it. Which one of those steps is failure in? Because I feel like that's a really important part of this whole process. Failure is a different thing, and that's one of the great teachers of humanity. Yeah. Failure teaches you a new measure of self respect. Yes. You know. Loneliness. Teaches you things too. Like uh, all the things that are hardships in life will have a very important teaching uh, assigned to them. Yeah. Per se. So failure to me is like, it, it gives you a new sense of self respect and kind of how to explain this in a good way. It's almost like steps of a s stair steps. You know, of ascension, exactly. Yeah, where you have to. Okay, it's gonna be I the biggest I word to. I use this whole podcast, mm -hmm. but yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is smart, dude. I'm fucking I'm good. I'm blown away. I'm good at this. I had an AP called Ascension, you did, man, and you, a tour. Yeah, you did, dude, man. So, I love those steps. That's a good, that's a good focal point. I like that. Have intention, basically, what you're gonna do how you're going to do it, focus, mm -hmm. and surrender. Yeah. Know what you want, get the skills and abilities, actually do the work, and then complete the work and the cycle starts over. Because you also know that just because you had a goal doesn't mean your whole life is over. It just means that you did that. Now set a new goal. And if you're Lil Wayne, whenever you complete all of these, it leads to the next three steps, pussy, money, and wheat. So there's that. <laughs> he is a... Uh, I have to say, very impressive, like, how hard he works. It's like, yeah. he's a very good example of someone who grinds. You got to, bro. You got, yeah, but that motherfucker will be in the studio every damn day. That's I mean, what I mean. Look at how much music he's put out. And I think, how much of it has hit? I think a lot of the rap, and maybe even for you a little bit, like, the kind of uh, branding is about uh, bitches and whatever you said. <laughs> I'm like, that ain't my branding, dude. It's more uh, but, asses but in and dicks. Re in reality... <laughs> It's a, just a lot of work that goes into it. Yes. You know, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. And those steps too, I feel, for me at least, instead of then, which I still do admittedly, but maybe less so than if I didn't have a formula or something to put my focus on, 
it prevents me from going into this chaotic, unpleasant, depressed mind where I don't don't do something or uh, maybe, but it's so abstract and scary <laughs> somehow. Like I don't even know if I want to do it. This just puts it back on me, mm-hmm. so I can actually be a man of action. The scary things are the important ones. Yes. Things but you also need a way to approach up. Fear is the unknown. Yep. We're scared of things we don't understand. That's why death is one of the biggest ones, right? You scared of dying? No. Me neither, bro. I'll die right now. Right here around this podcast. Let's you and it. I. Go go out Romeo Ju- Romeo and Juliet style. You I'm and down. I. I'll be Romeo. No, I'm not scared. <laughs> so death death gives rebirth. So death is just a transformation. I look at it the opposite way, not to get too dark here, but hey, if I find myself in this uncomfortable vessel in this confusing dimension, it must be worth something. There must be something bigger at stake here, so mm. I'd better pay attention. Because being human is difficult, humbling, comfortable, you know? And so in almost every minute for myself, I have to go to that higher ascending place of, okay, well, so what's the takeaway here? Like, what's... Ooh, that's deep. And what can I do to make it better for other people? That's deep. I like same, this. Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing with, like, things being bigger than yourself. All right. So going on this, I like this right now. Well, what's after this, Martin? What do you think there is, man? After what? After this life. More of it. Huh? More of it. You think there's more life mm-hmm. on this planet and on a different dimension, a different spirituality where you, you know, sit on that? I think it's challenging to be a human being, but I love humanity. And I think humanity is way older than we give it credit for. First off, very interesting uh, series just came out on Netflix, Graham Hancock, Ancient Apocalypse. Have yeah, I, I watched the first episode. I'm a huge, that's one of my biggest interests. Like, outside of music and martial arts, the origins of humanity Mm. prehistory what happened before the dryadic ice age uh what about all these myths and stories etched into stone etched into i don't think it's just some children it's like oh some funny guy like if you take the time to etch something into stone you're trying to say something important yeah like there's a lot more i might go deeper yeah like you know, that deeper history was Adam and Eve incest, like things like that I think about, you know. Well, have you heard the story about the Sumerians, you know, the clay tablets that are 8,000 years old that tell the story about the where humans actually come from? Isn't, oh, that, like, isn't that the Book of Mormon? They read it in the No. <laughs> I'm not going to around with you, but <laughs> I'm not going to around with you. That's a different thing. That's a funny thing in itself. That's a guy <laughs> who uh, is like, wrote a bunch of shit, and he's the only one who can understand dum, it. Dum, 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 dum. You, you know? see that South Park episode, dude? He puts himself up for success. There's like, only I with this like special crystal can actually decipher this. You better listen Sounds to Sounds like me. a wook, dude, with his fucking crystal. Like <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, me. it does a little bit, yeah. And that's not what we want. Yeah. Really. I don't know. Colts sound like fun at, at times, you know? Yeah, and I think a lot of people find it a lot easier to have someone else do all the hard thinking for them. And it's like, okay, this sounds great, you know. Sounds like Twitter. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Twitter. That's a very, very good point. Yeah. Who was that? That was Kyle that just said that. (laughs) Yeah, sorry about that. I don't even know if we said, we got Kyle Brim back there. I don't even know if we said hey to you, brother. That's all right. I'm here. (laughs) Yeah. We just got deep on it, but I love it. So you think there's it's not no- even that deep? We can go way deeper. Oh, how deep are you trying to take? But me? Twitter, you know, like science is for sure a new religion. You know, it's super dogmatic, and uh, all these people just like guessing about shit, kind of like people have done with religion. Yeah, like you have you have spaghetti Tom, but do you have Tom for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a very good question. It's provocative. Yeah, it's good. It's deep. I do. <laughs> Yeah, like that's so. You think there's more life after death, but what is that form of life to you? Oh, you mean like after my demise as Martin? Yes. Yeah, I do. Uh, based on fragmented memories that I have from t- 
times where I weren't Martin, but someone else. So like reincarnation type things. Yeah, I would. I guess it's very muddy, and I don't think I've met any person who have passed through the veil of forgetfulness intact and knows exactly what they're doing here. But that's what drives me, those big existential (coughs) questions. You know, who am I? Mm. Where do I come from? Where am I going? And yeah, for sure, energy can't be destroyed, only transformed. So there is something coming after this. Do you think you and I cross paths in a past life? Or is this the first time? I have no clue. Yeah. I was just saying if you had a, if you had a hunch. It would be cool. It would be cool. I, I do have a hunch. You got a hunch? Maybe I'll tell you off camera. Okay. That's, I'll take it. I love when they do that in podcasts. Yeah, they dude. Leave the people to, hanging. No, I had to do it. Like, I had to do it. <laughs> just leave the fucking people hanging. Yeah. Uh, that's good, though. I like that. I do want to pivot right here, though. So, kind of going back to something I was saying with, like, um, you know, just your heavy tour schedule and just going for so long and just, you know, the next thing right after the next thing. I'm seeing a pattern with artists that get about your stature. So like I'm thinking of like Excision or like a Zed's Dead or like a Grizz where they don't really do tours anymore. They just kind of do like takeovers or like big events and, um, you know, like Deadbeat. It's all, it's all the Deadbeats takeover and Excision throwing these massive like events mm-hmm. and not even doing touring. Is that a point you want to get to? But Because I know you said that, you know, you being busy is what you enjoy it makes for a happy martin it if you took a step back and did just only big events and stuff like is that a point that you want to get to because you know not saying this but you know you're getting old bro so uh you know i'm just curious (laughs) get (laughs) him i think that i am at that level and we're doing what confessed We packed in not quite 15,000 people, but it's still a pretty big event with hundreds of acts. And I take great joy in like being a little part of putting together this big puzzle. God, it was magical, bro. And and we've done a bunch of these takeovers too. And I want to do more of those. Maybe we'll look at some destination places. That still doesn't take away from the fact that I think like going back to the grind and being on the, you know, like lead from the front. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you pack yourself and some fellow warriors on a tour bus. I like leading from the back, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, continue. I can... S- yeah. I don't think you do, though. You're <laughs> you're also a pretty forward guy. I don't think, like, taking out the touring is necessarily right for me because I built myself that way, and I built myself an entire Wakand going through small off-markets and to places where they normally don't get a lot of cool shit coming through. I'm from a small little fishing village in Sweden. It's like I had to fend for myself uh, in a, you know, very proactive way to get to experience anything. No one came there. So yeah. I think I, I'm just rooting for the rednecks, like, because I'm one. Like, I, I think... Hey, let's go, bro. That's me, baby. And And what I found, too, is that you go to those places and you put on a hell of a show and you pack in way more PK subs and lasers that actually even fits in the venue. But just (laughs) those people are loyal fans, man. And they will also travel to come see you. So it's sort of, I think it's very important. It's, it's the right thing to do, at least for me as a little country boy. Same, bro. Um, And, and so I don't know, like, what is it about? Like, again, going back to the first step, what, so what glass ceiling are you setting for yourself? Because you just wanted to make a bunch of money? Mm. That's not my goal. Right. I could retire. I just don't want to because that's boring. And I don't feel like I've given everything. A job is how I can serve humanity in the lightest, brightest way possible. It's not what I get out of it. It's not what a job should be. When we, in 2,000 years, live in a meritocracy in the future and the right people for the right job has that position in politics, wherever it is, we're not there yet, but I, we're going toward it, um, that's going to be even more clear-cut. Like how, like, how can I serve you the best way possible? Mm. And I think that's how we get a better world. So I think part of that as an artist, you know, first of all, like, you've got to keep on putting out fresh music but also you got to somehow cater 
to your 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 fans and be available for them. Yeah. And for me, it's not about just packing in. It, uh, but it's not a better show is because oh wow we packed out this arena. It could actually be worse because usually the s- acoustics suck in those spaces and you have all kinds of other challenges. But it is also cool. I'm not saying that's wrong either. I think it's a it's a combination of both. Mm. So for me, why I do a lot of grind on the road still. And hey, we have it nice. Like we go out with two buses and a full semi, and I have my own shower on the bus and stuff like that. Like it's it's not a bad life. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I see it almost like being like a base missionary. Mm. That's my religion. It's base just like missionary. If you're ever in doubt, get slapped around by the base a little and see how you feel. And everyone comes out feeling better. Always. It's a great way to vent. Yeah. You know? And I, I almost like, now I feel like these Denver shows that we're doing, um, it's a combination. I actually get to play a down tempo set where I feel like a lot of these... Um, Harder set is really about emptying out all the overflow of energy or maybe the negative parts, if there's such a thing. And then you have other settings where you can refill. I think Ellis Dream has <clears throat> tapped into that really well, you know, with his meditations and strengthening. Mm. There's a lot of room for healing in this and so it's not just a business for me. Yeah. So what you're saying is you still got that fire under your ass. Yeah. Boy. You want to be, let's go, son. Let's oh, yeah. go. I love that about but you. But it's about, I'm a collectivist. I want to bring people up with me. That's how we're the strongest. Like that's the whole, what kind of a charity project? You know, it's something I started to give back to people. That's how we met, you know, and look at you now. It's like amazing to see you. And like I, I just look at it as a win because now I have one more w- strong warrior that's out like preaching this message that's so important in your unique way that's vastly different than how I would do it. Mm. You know, you're a true comedian, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how the skill set. You're funny. And I will speak to, I think, actually like not to blow too much smoke up your ass, but... Put but, it all uh, in me, dude. But uh, I do think that what you're doing for bass music right now is amazing and very important. Because you're, it's almost like, for lack of a better explanation, you're bringing it back to the real people, the working class somehow. It's not about these like fancy bottle service it, you, you're speaking to the common man and i love that i i don't know if anyone has done that better than you in the past so. oh dude i played a day of trailer park brother we're gonna have a good ass time you know what i'm saying <sighs> i know what you're saying it's also like your attitude you're very down to earth so it's it's very much yourself and i think that's a beautiful thing mm. that i like to see more in the but I'm pretty much like that too. Like what you see is what you get. Like this is who I am. Like and and for me, I'm on a fucking mission, man. Yeah. I know why I came to this planet, and it's to raise the vibration, and that's what I'm doing. And I think right now with all the, you know, cancel culture and whatever. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great that we get rid of the perverts and the fuck ups in the scene or any scene right dude you can't fucking k-hole to some a-hole you know what i'm saying it ain't right oh no God. even though that's like that's a good that's a good rhyme right there you like that <laughs> you like that but i think at the same time for someone like myself like i refuse to get so jaded and bitter and lose faith in people so i stop vetting people have i been right every single time hell no i vetted the wrong people we all know this mm. it's hard man how do you fucking know that's a damn... And you almost have to see by just doing it. But God damn it, I'm not giving up. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you cannot allow yourself just because uh, you're in a bad relationship or someone treats you poorly. Like, you can't let that define the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on a mission. It's important. And I do believe that in our own little silly way, we're helping to heal the planet mm. by bringing in more diversity, by bringing in a healthy place where you can actually vent without 
getting the gloves on, you know what I'm saying? Or stabbing someone to death or whatever it is, you know, like rave culture is a healthy way to vent. Yeah, dude. I like leaving it all on the dance floor. That's my point. Yes. Exactly. Very well said. That's yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't feel like I'm working. I felt this is what I was meant to do and I'm doing it. And therefore it just feels natural. Yes. Work is how I can serve people. So I never really feel, oh, I've worked too much. I deserve to do what? Like just sit around. What am I going to do? You know, this is more interesting. Yeah. It's more fun, dude. It is more fun. It's fun. And it also gives me a little bit sense of, um, I don't know that I'm actually a part of the solution and not the problem. I love that. You brought up something good that I wanted to touch upon. Um, you know, because Wakan. Wow, I'm like way behind you. Dude, That's like, listen, you like to say getting a little loose. You like to say I'm a Viking, dude. I can drink this. This does this don't well, you go you go. This doesn't it's affect me. This Donald Duck orange. I'll drink it, brother. I ain't scared of you. You said you always I like want to, it, but <laughs> it's very sour. You say this don't affect me. I'm a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> but you did say something that I wanted to touch upon. So like Wakan, it's, I, I'm not going to go into how much it means to me because it means the fucking world, right? Uh, Thanks. For having something that, you know, me, you saying these things about me, I, I feel like at little times I'm a little unconventional of an artist, right? And for you... And bless you. Because <laughs> that's what it is to be an artist. You need to be yourself. Yes. And I wish more people did that. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. But for you to see that <clears throat> and be like... Because I might be considered much of a risk to people. You know, I say dumb things. I do stupid stuff. But I, it's all in the name of fun and, and good times. Nothing else. For Can someone, I speak to that though a little go, bit? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, and, and, I'll continue and, this question in a second. Well, this has very much to do with exactly what you said. I think humor is, it's for the Native Americans, it's its one of the five hoquas. It's like the, one of the five things that a human being needs to be in balance and to be happy. Yes. And here is why. And here is why I think comedians need to be protected at all costs. So in the tribal communities, they used to be called Hayoka, and they used to be the sacred clown. Hayoka! Uh not Hadouken, <laughs> but Hayoka. And that would be the highest, the more booth. I was getting ass, but you continue, continue. They would be the highest ranking person in said tribe. The elder would be the comedian mm. because comedy is speaking the unspeakable. And when you speak the unspeakable, you make it possible for the person who hears it to actually process it and make something out of it. So that's why comedians talk about unspeakable things like incest and rape and all these things because we need to hear it in order to bring it out of the darkness mm -hmm. into the light so we can work on it. Yes. It's a sacred duty to be a comedian and that's why I think someone like you need to be protected at all costs. I feel the same with Dave Chappelle. I feel the same with Joe Rogan, Bill Barr, Theo Vaughn, Tim Dillon. I, I love watching comedy. Yes, it's the best. And man. when you get provoked by it, if there's some, like, well, you better pay attention because that is literally your soul telling you, hey, we have a little bit of growing to do. Mm -hmm. So comedy is super important and seeing people come after comedians right now and trying to like hush them down, it's very bad. It's, it's very bad. I like to think of it, of it as the last line of defense. Yeah. Yeah. The last line of defense to be able to talk about anything. Whenever people say you can't say this or you can't talk about that stuff, that's important. Like, I know the comedy set we had at Wakan Fest this year. Um, Congratulations, the, but that was so awesome. I was, was so proud of you. So and, much and fun. You should, you should notice how I used to say you should be proud of yourself. So much fun. But you had a better turnout than I had at my talking panel. You had like four times as so many people as me, you know, first off. So it's working. It's working. And secondly, it was super good. Like me and my all my friends were standing there laughing our asses off. It was it was great. Good, it was very good. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I remember um, talking with other comedians. I brought Mike Hall, 
Marcus Bond, Sharky, Jeremy Bolin. I remember all nice, very nice people. Amazing people. I'm glad I got to meet this. And uh, I remember talking with one of the comedians, and he was like, "I don't. He doesn't know anything about the dance world. He doesn't know anything about this Oops. this world that we live in. He's just a me. literally a comedian. That's all he does." And uh, he was like, "Man, I don't know if I should do these jokes." And I said, "It's." so important for you to go out there and be reckless because a this crowd isn't used to that and they need it you know what i mean we need to go oh, yeah. out there and do just the most reckless off the wall jokes because that's fucking comedy you know what well, i mean yeah, plus it's kind of a universal you know that energy no it's super important to be yourself there comedy is essential it is man I remember one of the comedians, um, what was so great about the comedy set, what comedy set, as I like to call it, what was so great about that set, man, is um, Mike Hall, one of the comedians, he walks off stage and he goes, dude, this is awesome. And I was like, yeah, I know. And he goes, no, dude, these people are actually here for comedy. Like, they were there to laugh. I know. Yeah. And I that was a beautiful way. thing. I know. And, and and next time we're doing it even bigger, and I need to coordinate with you, because like, I want to step that up even more. I'm so, I was super happy. That was one of my biggest takeaways, actually, for the festival. I just don't think I talked to you about it, but... No, we, that, we, you, you chatted with me after, he, man. It meant yeah, a lot. It was healing for me to see that. Because to me, again, that's inclusivity. That's another way that you serve humanity by being real mm. and speaking about very important and very, you know, no pun intended, taboo things. Yep. Which is probably why you took that name. <laughs> in a sense, yeah. <laughs> in a sense. But, uh, man, I appreciate that, dude. And don't ask me why I picked Liquid Stranger. I'm not going to do that. It's a lame question. Yeah, why would I? Have and I asked I'll, you a single lame question this whole time? No, you've been I'm awesome. not going to start now, dude. I promise you that. But, um, but no, I appreciate you that. appreciate you for saying that, man. And the things you said to me after the comedy set really meant a lot. And it was literally the most fun I've ever had on stage. Yeah, we need to do more. And my question to you, like, so I don't know how you do on your tours and stuff. Do you incorporate that a little bit? I have in, some in jokes it? here and there, but like, because I know you did on the balance tour. You, you at least your goal was to start every set with a joke. Yes, you know, mm -hmm. I got some but good I mean, ones on this tour. Sharky, would you agree? Absolutely. I got some good ones on this tour that I bust out. Yeah, yeah, good because I, I, I do think that sets you apart and is something that people really need. Um, so they don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah, well, that, that's my thing. I, in the balance to where I would come out the gate swinging with the joke because I wanted you to know this is silly, this is dumb, but it's a good time. And there's let's like, set that let's set that uh, vibe right now. That's all something good to do, like throughout the set. That's all, you know. I used to be so intimidated and bad at talking on the mic, so bad it was so cringy and so bad. Like Loper would be just like Martin what the fuck man like you gotta like step it up so i i took that seriously and i started stalking people who were really good at speaking i started watch you know, listening watching a lot of podcasts you know people are really good at interviewing mm. doesn't even have to be people i agree with all the time but just like people who have that flow and that and i realized that it's a lot about being yourself and a lot about being present you know mm -hmm. so it's just something i say i think you should definitely do more of even like throughout your set mm. it's even like a little one liner before a drop like oh i got i got some dude you got to see this blue collar base tour now i only got 45 minutes tonight so i gotta like condense it to what it is but uh but yeah man i i got i got some stuff in there and i'm trying to oh, good. i'm trying to expand it you know over the next years i would love to just do a comedy like do a tour where I, on the tour bus i have comedians and dj we have an early show late show Early no, show. I, I think I think um I'm not saying that you do this, but I, I really urge you not to see that as like some annoying little quirky part of yourself. It's like that's hey, your it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I have fun it, doing it, it. It's profound and it's it's how you help heal this planet. Mm. Like I'm starting to get that serious with you, but like you that's you really have developed that skill set. I have so much respect. I mean, that's hard. Just going out like, okay, we have all these like lasers and LED panels and sub bass and we're, but stand up comedians like someone like Dave Chappelle, you got only armed with a microphone. That's what I like about it. There's that no tricks. Some balls. There's no tricks, you know dude. You ain't got that's, the sound or lasers or lights to save you. I know. I know. I love that, and that does not go unnoticed. And I think through that trial by fire, 
uh, you will um, you will uh, forge a very strong person. Hell yeah! You know, yeah. I I I have a hard time believing that someone could actually hurt you very easily with words. No, no, <laughs> you know what I'm you saying. Can't, you can't offend it, me. It's very difficult, you know. Yeah, it would be. You should try. Go for it right now. I don't want to. I'm <laughs> good friends. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you feel better about yourself. You do, man. And you saying that stuff. Hold on, I'll take a sip. Would you we cheers? Yeah. You saying that stuff means a lot. You putting your faith in me means a lot and for you to bring me on to you know this family that we're in means a lot because like i said for a while i felt like i won't say lost but just like i'm doing my own thing no one wants to fuck with me and that's fine that is what it is and to have you be like yo be, we like that you know that means a lot and it goes into the original question that i was going to ask before we got into this tangent so for wakan wakan is very much a family and i feel that all the people on the label I'm very close with. It's not just like I see him every now and then. Sometimes it is like that, but when I see him, it's like we haven't skipped a fucking beat. We're right on that same measure, mm -hmm. okay? It's really good people. And so with with Wakan, with all the success from it, and you know, there's all these aspiring artists who want to be on Wakan. So many people, I'm sure. Like I can't imagine. Now you're off the internet, but I just can't imagine the submissions that Chloe goes through. I mean, she's told talked to me about it on the podcast and stuff. But you know, the vetting system because you know, without getting too dark into it, there's been some people on the family who weren't who we thought they were. Yep. Right. Very <sighs> painful realization. Very for me. painful, man. And I, but yeah. I guess also sobering and healthy in a way. Yes. You know, it's really made me start thinking about a lot of things and like how 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 do you know how do you vet people better that was my question how how has that affected you bringing people onto this family are you a lot more guarded and yeah that's like the main question just how how has this affected you how has it made you think about who's in your circle cuz you're pretty you're pretty secluded guy when it comes to your circle there's only so now many people I am, but I, I i'm the nicest person you'll ever meet and i'll invite anyone with open arms and there's a deep sadness in me talking about this thing so i just gotta be honest with you i don't want to make you sad man no no no. you're not making me sad but but this thing that we, it's super important that we talk about this um it's made me a lot more paranoid Mm -hmm. And it's made me go off the internet and I respond way less to my fans nowadays because, you know, it's just safer that way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's also not really who I want to be. And I've really been struggling with that. Like, how can I vet people better? How did you know when not even those particular people's closest friends even knew? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's really fucking easy to swing your cape with the wind or virtue signal on Twitter all the time. I don't want to do that either. I'm a real guy. I want to work with real people. Uh, but again, going back to I refuse to get so jaded and bitter that I stop believing in people. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's the answer. No. But I don't have the answer much. I don't know right now what I could have done to avoid these things, hindsight 2020, even I had the best intentions. And I even think maybe everyone had the best intentions. I don't even know. That's not for me to speak about. But right now, as we're sitting here and what goes through my mind at night when I lay down to sleep or when I wake up, it's this. This is what I think about a lot. How, what should the process be? to figure this out, should we then just like only work with people that are already established and has proven for 10, but that's not what we do. We're pioneers. Like we're trying to build artists. We're trying to take someone that we see this raw potential and help them with infrastructure, right? That's wow. Here's a race car, but it's parked on this fucking gravel. How do we build the perfect infrastructures? So they can move around and be more successful. That was the whole premise of Wakan. <clears throat> Wakan is not to make money and it's not well it's to help other people make money but it's not <laughs> for it it it's basically a charity project that's I've never heard that word before shared until now and it, you said yeah, it no, earlier and I, I don't like, like it. to throw I don't like to throw around that and mm. I don't want that to be 
you know, something that makes me seem like some virtue signaling person. It's like, oh, I'm so fucking good. I'm just like, no, but I think that the culture needs this. Mm. And there are a lot of ways that we try to help our artists, but there's also, I, I don't have video cameras set up in everyone's fucking bedroom. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'll set one up I for you, brother. I see like raw potential and I'm sitting on all these resources because I worked really fucking hard in my life and I haven't really fucked up so much. I'm sitting on all these surplus that I just want to give to people. That's how I look at it. And I get a lot back too. I'm not trying to say that it's just a one way street. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how I became friends with you. Mm. And my God, do I, do my sets get a lot better from playing your sick ass music and to have you in my life? Yes. But the whole premise of a con was truly to help people. That's why it got started. And it's not about being the coolest, most trendy, jumping all this. No, it's about like finding people that we feel is like, whoa, but if, if we could just like help them tweak a couple, it's like practical things. Like if you need money to print up some more clothes, I got you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's real tangible things. And we have a lot of success stories of people that we've broken and then some of them prevail and some of them turn out to be maybe not the right lumber, you know? Fuckheads. But yes, and, and it, truly painful to see that and um i'm grateful too that the world doesn't stand for that shit anymore let's get away with all the fucking parts and like bad people who wants to have that shit around but it is very hard to see it and that's where i truly feel that yeah i gotta somehow get this crystal ball or we're no more i don't know yeah, what do it, you think i think it ain't on you you know what I'm but saying? It is, yep. it, it, listen, like with you being the helm, you being the leader, even though you don't see yourself as such, but it is that thing. Obviously, when the most recent thing happened, there was me. I was like, fuck, I wonder how Martin's dealing with this right now. And I should have reached out and I didn't. I feel bad about it, but I should have. Um, that was something I was talking about with Lindsay. I was like, I, I just hope Martin's okay. It's got to suck for him. Because in a sense, like, you know, these are people you put on, but like you said, you don't have fucking cameras in their rooms. You don't know who That'd they be are. Behind. Creepy. That would be creepy, dude. I mean, you see them fucking doing some ketamine, trying to do a little bit of a snuggle struggle, but you can't do that type of things. And so, <laughs> what what I'm getting out of here is is a you don't know, and your like you said, your intentions are pure. You know what I mean? Like, I can't even begin. I mean, I could, but it would go forever. The things you've done for me. But the result, I'm a result driven person too. It's like, oh, good. And I appreciate you saying that, obviously, but I want good results. Like, and I want good long term results. Yes. It's always a gamble putting, you know, <laughs> putting your name with other people. You know what I'm saying? Like to vouch for other people. But it is also the right thing to do. Because mm. I'm not going to stop. You shouldn't. Because every artist. I remember talking, I forgot who I was talking about this with, but every artist has somebody that helped put them on. Now, you, you've been doing it for a while. You might have had to go and get that shit out the gutter. You might have had to get it out the mud by yourself. But nowadays, someone has to, you can't do this by yourself. No, you, can't, I, I, you can't sustain it by yourself. You know what I mean? It's definitely not. Um, I found, like, hey, I used to be the guy who was pretty much like the underdog who would be playing a little weirder shit and whatnot. And, um, and uh, you know, just like having to really uh, pay my dues, you know? And I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, but, and I only played 100% my own music. But you see how lonely that is? Too? Yeah. I, I, I love now that I can go up and play Taboo or Sully, you know, G-Rex, Champagne Drip, all, Lucid, all my friends. And I fucking love these people. And I get an opportunity to shout them out. And, you know, it, it's such a wonderful feeling being a lone wolf. Bro, suck. It's not just a wonder fulfilling for you. It is for us. Cause I was in the crowd at your Wakan set closing out main stage that last day. And he played six of my songs back to back, bro. Know, no, no, no. They're dude, so good. Bro, I got more hopped after every single song, dude. I was like, oh shit, that's my song. Oh shit, this is my song. 
God damn. Like I was jumping up and down with excitement. So like, it's cool for like you say it's cool for you because you have this good music, bro. That shit means the world. Like Susan, whenever like an artist win, and like those uh, we always got to look for those situations. Yeah, the win win. It's just like no one gets hurt, everyone wins. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, it's deplorable that some people seemingly have used that goodwill to do a bunch of shady shit in the background. I'm not happy about it. Yes. I'm a fucking nice guy to a certain point, but that shit, uh, I have a huge amount of disdain for. That's not what I stand for. You know, we stand for equality for men and women. We stand for empowerment. You know, that's what the whole logo is about. That's what all our things are about. Mm. And of course, that makes me look like a fucking fool. I'm fully aware of it. Like, we don't even have to sugarcoat it. Yeah. It's fucking sucked. It made me really sad. Fuck you for putting me in this situation. You guys who are these people. Yeah. Fucking hurt me really bad. Yeah. That's the honest truth. Because, I, like I said, I know you're such, like, it's tough. And it would be easiest for me just like, oh, well, fuck it then. I'll just focus on myself. Yeah. I'm doing great, you know? Yeah, that would be super easy and but very I grateful. I refuse you could. to be that person. That would be fucking cowardly. That's what's special about you, man. Not, I won't say special. That's that's what's beautiful about you. You but know it, what I mean? You it still hurts to to read those things and be like lumped in with the fucking pervert fucks. Like I'm serious. Like it really hurt me. Yeah, I, I can imagine, man. And I mean, that's why I've stepped. I'm not that person, but like. Oh, so I'm going to go now. You're going to force me to go on like an apologize and virtue signal. No, fuck you. I'm not going to do that. I haven't done anything fucking wrong. And I'm sure you feel the same way. I feel the same way. Here's the thing. A lot of the people who have gotten canceled over the next, over the last couple of years, I've had them on my podcast. Yeah. And so now you seem, oh, so you knew. Uh, I supported them and their actions. Yeah. But now there's this big, I get a lot of things. It's like, all right, Taboo, why are these podcasts still up? I deal with that. A, I stop monetizing those episodes as soon as I shit find this stuff. But also, I feel like history is important. Yeah, I agree. I don't feel like this I is should, a very good question. This is very good. Yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I should delete something or take something down just because you think I should. Because going back to what we were saying, we think differently. History is also important. Now, something that somebody did, whether it was an accident, maybe they're fucked up. I don't think that defines them to their core. I'm not saying these people are good people. I'm not saying they're also terrible people at all times to their core. You know what I mean? And I, like, and there's some people who might hear that. It might be hating me for that too. But that's just the way I feel. I think that at people's core, people are good people. I think people fuck up. People lose sight of who they are and what's going on. Agreed. And also think that history is important. And I'm not gonna have to. I'm not gonna do something just because you think I should. I agree with you 100%. You know, I, I've i been asked the same things, and I think we've, I mean, we've had big meetings about these things too. Should you separate art, the art and the artist? Uh, what about collabs? There are, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to be a low person. I hate talking shit about people. Yeah. That's not what I do. But let me put it this way. I have a couple of collabs um, that are also under fire. Right, mm. so I can't play my own songs anymore <laughs> because they're tied to. And I tried a couple of times. I lost fans over it. They were so mad at me. It's like, how could you play? Well, it's my fucking song. I worked on this really hard. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and then on the other hand, you have thousand people hitting me up and say, "Oh, please play this, play this song." So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna. And, and so, bottom line, it's impossible to please everyone. There's no rule book but, to this but shit. There is such a thing as right and wrong. Yes. Things are not just relative. Like, I don't like the progressive relativism. Like, there are things that are right and there are things that are wrong. And they're not always the things that are right that are the easiest. So, I'm going to continue on my own crusade to bring out the best art, help people, uh, empower people. Uh, none of that can change. You know, yeah, but uh, but what to do with our fallen or the people who sidestepped? Like, I I don't fully know what went on, but I would like to say I I, I at my core I'm just like you. 
we're all a work in progress. Yep. No, it's, it's perfect. It's humbling and difficult to be a human being. It's really uncomfortable for me every fucking day. I don't like all these bodily needs and sweating and pooping and all boners. Boners. Yep. It's a good you one. I get it. them on airplanes allergies. all the time. I have allergies to a bunch of shit. Um, so I, I also, as much as like, I do not condone that type of behavior. There is such a thing as right and wrong. Like, if you cannot be with us if it comes out that you do these type of things. I'm not cool with it, but I also have empathy for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I can feel you on that. I'm trying to choose my words wisely because people are going to judge the shit out of this. But that's why it's, that's why it's important to talk about it's, it. Again, yeah. speaking the unspeakable. I'm glad this came up. I was going to make a point to bring it up myself because I need to talk about this too. I need to vent. Um, and I want to talk to you about it too. And I'm not shy to do it in front of my camera. I have fucking nothing to hide. Neither have you. Um, it's really important that this doesn't get uh, totally stuffed away somewhere or that the only place that people talk about it is Twitter. Some uninformed person goes out and shits on people. That's not good either. No. This is way better. But do I have a solution? No. Am I working on it? Hell yeah. Every single day. It takes up a lot of my mental capacity right mm -hmm. now. Trying to figure out, how can I do this better then? Okay, so despite our best effort, you know, we're, we're right like 95% of the time, but okay, so what about that? Is there something we can do? Um, I, don't, I don't actually know yet. There's not a rule book to it, dude. No one fucking knows. And it, it the thing is, is like, Bro, I'll go to war for you, dog. Anybody can say something bad to you, I'll fight them on sight, boy. I, we'll do we'll do a duel with swords. Not really, but you know what I'm saying, dude? Because, like I said, your intentions for it are well, pure. I'm pretty blessed. I'm not worried about people. And there are not a lot of people coming at me. But in general, Money. it's been a darker mindset. And I get that. Pandemic, everyone's stuck with their own emotions and mental stuff and having less money and struggling, like it's going to come out somewhere. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a little bit separate. Those actions can still not be condoned. Yeah. Um, but I would like to learn how to vet people better. And that's what I'm working on right now. Because mm. it, it took me a minute for you to have faith in me, I feel like. Oh, for, yeah. for you and I to become friends to yeah. become cool to yeah. just become like you know colleagues in, in a sense you know what i mean that took years and i didn't feel like it really came true until the balance tour with you and i well yeah maybe i i don't know i've i've liked you and i think you're extremely skilled at what you do uh i think with you if i'm going to be totally honest i just want to make damn sure that you're actually real no i know like this is how you are yeah but it seemed you're very bolsterous you know what i'm saying like you're intimidating in how extroverted you are for someone like me who's so introverted and you're like whoa you know it's like oh, whoa yeah and that's like but i totally embrace it because that's who you are and i love you for it you know but, but I, I, I do think, no, but I'm just being real with it too. I do think you're not wrong. Like I, with you, I probably vetted a little harder. You actually. vetted me hard as hell, but that's why and I, I was wasn't always like, you come up and be like, Wah, and I was like, Wah. you know no, what I'm saying? Wouldn't, wouldn't but that's that. very intentional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like, and I, I guess that's one thing that's happened to me. I, I, I keep to myself more and I have a few people that I know are loyal, real people. Best of my ability, I know this. Mm. I stick with them, you know? So if you want to be a part of my inner circle now, it's harder. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want it to be like this, but it is. The reason I was bringing it up and talking about me. The guard has come up a little oh, bit. bro, you knew how to throw them hands, boy. You that That's black not belt. what I'm talking about, I know, though. I know, but I just know. like a mental... A mental kind ring. Of, uh, moat yeah. around my castle. The reason I brought it up to deal with me. I wasn't just trying to make it about me in that sense. I was bringing it up to tell you and then everyone listening that you did vet me. It took, like I said, it took years for me to even feel like, you know, 
But this also happened after my worst heartbreak. Yes. With one person who I thought was like one of my best friends. Yes. And quite frankly, people don't even know because it, there was a lot of, I saw this and we split ways two years before before everything blew up. So in that sense, like I did actually see it coming. It's heartbreaking, man. Yeah. It's like, it, I, I'm, I'm sh you know, it's like I've been cheated on. It feels kind of like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, whoa, how can I get my bearings now? Who are, who, who am I for this person? And who is this person? It's scary. Mm. It's really discombobulated. Anyone who's ever had someone cheat on them or, all of a sudden turn out to be another person. I think they can relate. Mm. It's weird, man. I've been cheated on and I've cheated. You know, people love, live and they learn. And so there's different. Maybe you can have empathy for both I can. sides. Yes. Which is, I think is so important right now. And that should be said, like, I'm not preaching any violent path. And again, even though it would be easier for myself to go, it's like, fuck this shit then. I'm good. Like, I made all the money I need to make, I've done enough maybe, I can just isolate myself. Mm. I could take any <laughs> job if I need to, it, it, I'll be fine. Mm. It's not about me. No. But it is about something bigger, and again, and I've been harping on this, but it is important for myself, and that's where I've landed. Over my fucking dead body, I'm not giving up. Good. And I didn't I didn't want to bring this up to bring you down or any mood no, down. No, and you didn't. This Good. is important. I was going to bring this up myself. This is something that I want to talk about. And I'm not going to do it on Twitter. Nope. There's no this is way more than 140 characters and this is a dialogue. Yep. You're saying things. I'm processing it. I'm bouncing it back. This is how I want these conversations to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's clean. Yeah. So thank you. I mean, this is super right. important that we talk about. Thank this. you, man. I appreciate you being so transparent about it. Um, I appreciate the process that you took with me. I appreciate you taking a chance on me and having faith in me. So that means the world, you know. Oh, dude, I'm so I'm. You should be proud of yourself, Mitch. I'm having you're a good dude. time. I'm yeah. having a good time. No, but you're making you you you're doing something important for this world right now. And I think you are as well. And Thank it would. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in the position that I am right now. Which position are you in right now? I'm doing good. <laughs> and then I'm proud of myself. You know what I mean? Like, th I, I'm not going to front. Things are going good right now. And I was cooking. It's, it's smelling better and better. Can you feel it? Too? I like can feel pizza. it. There's something in there. Yeah, I can feel it, dude. You know, like a fresh, freshly shaved. You know what I'm saying? But like, I can feel it. And that wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the position I am right now for you. And for anybody that comes at you for not knowing the answers and not knowing everyone's true behind the doors life. Fuck them because you have, and, I'm, and and I saw you roll your eyes at that, but like, I mean that in not like in an actual way, but like you don't have all the answers. You're trying your best. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in the position I am right now. So thank you for not giving up and keeping that venture in you to bring up other people to be better, to, you know, change, you know, we're much better off with you included in our, our band of warriors, and it should be said. Oh, I got to battle, bro. I it should go to be battle. said too, and they're not here now. But let let's just give uh, hats off to Loper, yep, Chloe, yep. Kendall, Bree, yep, the people who actually work in the Wakan office. Angels. And and if there's one thing I might have done right, like I don't a and r a lot for the label. They do that stuff. I used to be mic I micromanaged all the merch because I'm super interested in fashion, but I you can tell, bro. Look at you. You look like no. a damn. You look like a damn <laughs> like a damn Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, you look. <laughs> you looking like a guy. It's definitely Christmas season is definitely coming. <laughs> you looking like a gay juggalo, dude. You look fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate. <laughs> Did you know when I moved to America, I found this super sick hoodie. I loved it. I had this man with a hatchet on front, his red, and I was like, dude, I need this. I started wearing it. And people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you're a juggalo. And it's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? We're I don't even know what a juggalo. <laughs> I didn't even know that ICP existed. Oh, that right? is I shit, just saw dude. the hoodie. I was like, this is sick as fuck. I want it. I started wearing it. And I couldn't believe how much hate there was getting ever. It's, like, it's the it most punk rock thing the, ever. Yeah. So punk rock. And then I, I actually found out more about ICP and I love them. I think like our culture, they're, dude, they're just like 
Wooks, like they start for the same thing. Yeah, we're the Wookalos, that yes. the Juggalos. Yes. You know, it's the same fucking thing. Um, I don't know. I've never been to one of these parties, but you it need seems to go, bro. Yeah. Oh, if fuck. you go with me, I'd go. Dude, I would go with you tomorrow. I'll cancel my show right now. I one of my really, friends was offered to play one of those parties. I want to play the gathering. That's on my bucket yeah. list. Honestly, if I'm being real with you, a goal of mine for my next Wakan album is to have a feature from ICP. Dude. Dude. That's a that's Violent a, J, whatever. whatever yeah, Violent J, uh, Violent J, Shaggy Too Dope. Yep, yep, he's got it. Look at this motherfucker right over here. That's honestly a goal of mine for the next album. What kind of album is to have ICP? cooking? Cooking? I don't know. So, smells so... Kay, yeah, smells Kaylee like, might be cooking. Kaylee, Mike's oh, girlfriend, she's an angel. She'd be cooking. What's on the menu? I don't know. Should, I should go up there and check. Yeah, <laughs> I smell it too, man. It smells good. Spaghetti? Who knows? Spaghetti. Speaking of spaghetti, this is a question that Sharky had earlier that I thought was fantastic. It's cool that I do it. Yeah, dude, you ever have someone come up to you and be like, I don't have anything to sign, but can you sign my spaghetti? Oh, yeah, it's actually happened. No but shit, it was, dude. A, it was in a Ziploc bag. But, yeah, I've signed, <laughs> I've literally signed a Ziploc bag with spaghetti. It's not the worst thing I've ever signed. Um, What's the worst thing you've ever signed? <laughs> I don't know. My whole life is just roses and rainbows. I ain't, Everything is great. Would you sign a cock? Be honest. No, there would be, way, no. I'd sign a dick, dude. I ain't never signed a dick. I signed a dildo. I've signed some titties and I signed some ass. Now, I've stopped doing that because I'm a taken man. People will be like, can you sign my tits? I'm like, negative. I know. It's a little bit same for me. So, I don't know. I don't mind. But I want to make people happy. I do too. But at uh, what cost? Yeah, like, but my, I want to make my girlfriend happy more than any other. Of course. Yeah. I mean, like that. She's an angel. Shit, but that's, you know, we can joke around all day long and be clowns and stuff. But <laughs> when it comes down to that, I'm a very loyal person. Same. So I wasn't. On, you're on the inside. I mean, I wasn't. I feel like at one point. Really? Yeah, because I was. I mean, different situations for different strokes. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're unhappy. Sometimes you're stuck. But this is the first time I felt like I've had something real. And I don't want to fuck that up. I know you guys are awesome together. She's a good gal. See, I've never, I've always been very loyal, I think. <laughs> Maybe other people. No, I but think that, my, that's never my... ever been like a big problem. That's not never been like, um, I've had plenty of things to work on. Mm -hmm. You know, coming out of my shell. I mean, it's like doing this is very odd to me. Like, why would someone want to? Listen to me. It's going great right. though. But yeah, of course. I mean, like, you gotta apply yourself to every situation. Mm -hmm. Loyalty though has always been that's what Loper has tattooed mm -hmm. on his hands. He's the man. That's how you know. Like, that's that's super important to me. I'm I've always been loyal to my to my like to my family, to my I mean, boys. If you're loyal to like it's like it's about being loyal to yourself. Yeah. It's like having that um sort of uh, stable ground and i know who i am and i didn't for a while no i, I think most people i mean yeah for yeah sure. now i feel like i have a good handle on it i think martial arts helped me a lot they're getting into that early you learn how to fucking pay attention get in line you learn to understand hierarchy and just shut the fuck up and work you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. and and uh, in the best way possible that's helped me i used to be a little rascal but martial arts straightened me out without that i think i would have been way more it's like, didn't have to test as many boundaries, maybe. Mm -hmm. I feel like martial arts, so I did Sabacon for three years. I feel like it made me even what more did of you a rest. Sabacon. What is that? So it's like a mix between um, Taekwondo and Shotokan. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've studied Shotokan, mm -hmm. but I've never studied Taekwondo, even though the American Taekwondo Association, I knew some higher ups in an organization that used to come to our Kung Fu meetings and stuff. Super nice people. Like some of the nicest people I've met in martial arts. Uh, the ATA is the biggest martial arts organization I still think in America. It's just mm. like, like, it's like 300,000 students or something like crazy Shit. like that, you know? Well, I don't know. I'm just spewing out numbers. I could be totally off, but it used to be Taekwondo. Is just got, in Europe, that's not a big thing. Yeah. But I have a huge respect. Like, all martial arts are great because ultimately the world shouldn't be a battlefield, but it teaches you other things. To me, <coughs> I'm sorry, it's like a spiritual path. And very tangibly, you learn how to 
apply yourself better. A, a good example, for example, retention. If you can do 108 moves that has its name, you can also execute it. Remember the order. Remember the name each move has. Mm-hmm. School becomes easy. Yeah. So th- that's one of the biggest takeaways. I became a lot better in school. I never was good at school, man. You're talking to a state champion, actually. I don't know if you knew that, dude. In what? But, uh, in uh, Mississippi State Games. What and then, uh, so also in the, um, it was like a karate, like an organization of where we had tournaments and stuff. I won. That's amazing. Yeah, I won. Congratulations. I, won. I got some. So you're a winner. I mean, winner, dude. but that just because you apply yourself. Yeah, I actually was, super, whenever I was into martial arts, it was something that I was doing when I was home in the morning before I got on the school bus. Like, it was something I was pretty passionate about for a while until I discovered skateboarding and titties, pretty much. I was, you know, I was younger. <laughs> One thing doesn't exclude the other. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, oh. I just got older and my focus went more towards playing with my bands and, you know, just being more punk rock. That was just my thing for a while. And, uh, I had a little bit of a dark stint where I was fighting and doing things. I used to be a lot more angry person mm. when I was younger. But uh, to me, the martial arts has always been a very internal thing to mm-hmm. ground myself and to keep myself well put together. Balanced. Yeah, uh, balanced. And it's really improved my cognitive abilities. That's what I noticed. I had very good grades. I graduated with a 4.0. Like, I had perfect grades. Cause, and I also took school seriously. But that's the thing. Like, I think some people, including my own son, who's now 23, uh, he has repeatedly said to me, it's like, oh, almost like he thinks that because he, he didn't apply himself to school as much. I didn't either. Because he's almost, like, too smart. Like, why would he? It's not interesting enough. You know, it's like, why am I doing this shit? And so I, I have a huge respect for that too. And for the people who don't really find, you know, their path within academics, like don't fret. Like neither did I, I'm like a DJ, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I have some good ranks in martial arts. I have degrees in psychology, but this is what I ended up doing. Like, you know, there's always something where you're, brilliance and excellence will sort of start speaking from you you know Mm -hmm. there's something that makes everybody uniquely themselves and they need to explore that avenue and i think it's like a little bit like wealth you talk about wealth there are 13 Mm. phases of wealth okay okay and money would only be one of them but also having good health having good friends you know you can go on and on but it's the same thing with smarts i feel Mm. you know a lot of the smartest people i know or maybe more like street smart, you know. And but that's that, that's how can you, if you're put in a situation, make the most out of it just based on what you have. And it's not just necessarily academic skills is going to tell how well you're going to do. Yeah, it's you know? real life experiences, and especially as an artist, I don't think you need to be <laughs> super like intellectual at all. Mm. Maybe to learn to understand the technology a little bit, and maybe to learn discipline. The discipline is the thing. But if you love something enough, you're going to want to do it. Like, I, you know, I thought of this, like, I, I, you know, I was born in the 70s, late 70s, 78 is when I'm born. So when I grew up, this whole bipolar, ADHD, Asperger's, autism, like all these big words and letter combinations in the DSM-5 didn't really, but I... But having a degree in psychology, I can now look at that and say, oh, wow, I clock in on a lot of these things. You're right? on the spectrum, my yeah, man. Yeah, I'm definitely like, but 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 I also don't like to throw it around. It's like, oh, that's so OCD of me that I did this. No, that's not OCD. It's just wanting a certain order. I'm trying to dramatize that. Basically, like, okay, if, you have a, if you're a person, have a hard time focusing on something for a long time. Maybe it's because the fucking thing you're trying to focus on is boring and Boom, sucks. dude, you're not into easy. it, dude. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't think that's anything wrong. People who are really highly intelligent usually require a lot more stimulation. Mm-hmm. You better not bore them or they're going to... And a lot of these people, you know, 
who are you know autistic whatever they they're more interested in things than people yeah. maybe rightfully so and people give us like oh people you're sitting on their phone yeah because it's a lot more fun to sit and look at my feeds than you sit like this and, and like maybe talk to someone you know yeah there's nothing wrong with it it's deep i don't know if it's even that deep it is i mean it's it common may, sense yeah it is common sense I get a lot of stimulation for going outside, really like go fish, go hunt, fucking get in the woods, man. I, know. I think yeah. that's good. That's, that's some good shit right good. there. Yeah. Dude, but this has been fantastic. Are we are we stopping this now? How long have no, we been talking? I don't know. An hour and thirty two minutes. That's beautiful. That's yeah. Not enough. As, we're not done, my dude. We just have a new a different segment, a different focus of this right okay. here. So we got a couple fan you questions. Keep all this in your head. I You're very good at this. I plan nothing. Okay. And it's like super good at it. natural conversations is where I, I realized if I started writing stuff down, it didn't feel natural. Nothing that we've gone into. It didn't have a segue or didn't have a natural bring up maybe like a question or two that I had in my head. But like other than that, it's been natural. And that's I have more fun with that. Like you asked me if I had anything ready for this. I said, so now, no. when we do our Wakanda podcast, we're going to be uh, Loper preps a lot of stuff because he's a prepper. Mm -hmm. He's you the know, king of that. And I'm good. At, I'm good at just I never prayer, prayer anything. I'm good at going off the cuff, my dude. Yeah, you really are. But and, and that's also a skill. Like, um, I feel that's something I sometimes struggle with. Is I can rant like a motherfucker. If you ever yep. noticed. Uh, but oh, I've had deep conversations with you, well, dog. I but, know. But I digress. Yeah. And then getting from that back to the thing again is sometimes a little bit of a stretch. But you're very good at keeping those uh, things stored away, compartmentalized, and then whoosh. I try. Yeah, that's something I tried, and, and I've gotten better at it over the years, especially doing this podcast. Is maybe it's sharper on that. Your hair is longer. Yeah, dude, I got that fucking slut cut, boy. It might, it's longer than y'all's. Yeah, it is, dude. Don't front. I know you were looking and judging. No, dude. I got this. Cut. I'm also in my mid forties. So I should be happy to have as much hair as I yeah, do. Yeah, dude, you're looking good. Um, but I told my hairdresser like it was long, mm -hmm. and I cut it back all the way up here. They even have to wear these headbands, but before no, before we get have into you ever had your hair whiplash you in the eye because that happens oh, yeah. every like every now on stage. Hair. So that hurts, man. That's why I wear these. That hurts, man. <laughs> Fashionable. That shit safe. hurts, man. And safe. <laughs> yeah. I have like some fan questions, and we want to get to Kyle's. Well, he's got he's probably got a heater. Before we do that, <laughs> I wanted to bring up a confest. It had been irresponsible of me not to do so. You have a question for me? He, I'm sure he does. He's this good like at this. Secret? I mean, he, oh no, I usually just try to ask a uh, one question to each guest that comes through here. We're gonna cool. get to it though, but what confessed second year in a row? Well, not in a row, but second year. It was awesome. One of the greatest experiences of my life. Got to have my family there. They got to see me do stand up. My that dad, awesome. my dad, I had like probably 30, 40% of my stand up jokes were about my dad. You, and I, know, I, know. I, I, I thought of that and I saw your dad sitting in the audience just laughing and being like totally cool about it. It was, that was a very sweet moment. He's a me. comedian at heart too. Do you know that my parents have never, ever seen me perform? Whoa. The, and my grandma, who has now passed away, bless her soul. She always thought that I was like begging outside people with an acoustic guitar and a fedora because that's <laughs> what her is like. Oh my god, I can't believe you want to be a musician. That's horrible, Martin. So my my uh, my mom and my dad has never seen me. Well, they saw me perform because I performed when I was just a little kid. They saw me perform with the piano when I was six years old. Yeah, like classical music and stuff, but. Nothing, not like about. not a liquid stranger. So, so seeing like, and they live in Sweden too, and it's totally understandable. I'm not trying to give my. I love my fucking parents. Yeah, I hope I can see. I haven't seen them for three years. Damn, because of pandemic and me being busy. Yeah, that's. I'm the, sure they're proud of you though. I, I hope so. Yeah. I'm proud of them. Good. If that helps, that means that's beautiful. But it, that's a very healing, <clears throat> and I think that's um, that's rave culture right there. Like it is for everyone. I'm trying to get closer. Yeah. yeah, we're in the car for a little harder to slide. Mm -hmm. But no, man, uh, like it meant a lot having them there. Let's do this away from the camera. Yeah, if I can put the it. Swedish thing. Yeah, but. Um, Only Vikings can do it. But it was it was a special year. It was one of the most special moments having had my family there. Um, you know, my close friends, my uh, comedian buddies who knew nothing about this and mm -hmm. stuff. That meant a lot. Going into year three, I'm assuming there's a year three. I'm pretty sure that's probably just a known thing. Assuming is making an ass of you and me. Okay. That's well, one of my mentors always told me. Is there a year three? 
Yeah, I mean, we were cool. working on it. Good. What are the expectations and things that you want to do differently to improve on if you think there are any for year three? The, my biggest thought when we came out of year two or during, you know, the second Wakan Fest was that it wouldn't even be responsible in this setting to make it a lot bigger. Now, there are a couple of extra pieces of land that could be used for Mulberry Mountain, mm. basically a, another camp spot. We can pack in some more people. But, dude, the infrastructure there, I feel it was like, we had like 6,000 people in that little clearing for the first night. And I was worried that someone's going to get hurt. Like that's, that's where I'm thinking, right? Mm -hmm. I think we need to grow very responsibly. And I don't feel like what Con Festival doesn't have to become, uh, you name it, like huge. Or it's, it's not the more people showing up doesn't make it a better festival. True. But maybe we want to do something aside from that. That's what I'm talking a lot to Loper about right now. I'm trying to convince him. It's like, no, we can, we can do, you can, you can do work, work harder. You know, <laughs> he's already working so hard. So he it's is. just a question about that. You know, um, I don't want to change a lot more than I want to have better infrastructure, uh, shorter lines for people, always improve on security, improve on people just being comfortable and feeling like they're special because they are. And, between the first and the second year, also because we're living in a harsher climate where people are more angry, uh, there we got more complaints the second year. I I read all of it. I listen through all this thing. So does Chloe and Loper and Wayland and Dan and my entire team that puts this together. So it's more about like those things, just like finick around with those parameters to get it more enjoyable. Maybe we'll make it smaller. Mm. That's just my idea. I don't like. I shouldn't talk too much about this because I don't know what's gonna happen. But that was one thought that flew in my head. It's like, oh, this is like a little too many people here. Like, maybe <laughs> we should cap this at ten thousand people. I thought it was great, man. There's so much room on that dance floor. So much room on the dance yeah. floor. You can go to the front if you wanted to. You can go in the back. People were chilling. I mean, uh, that's now, why we. I mean, we 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 do our festival like very differently than most festivals because mm. we usually don't have the stages compete as much which I think is awesome, but it also is like a, you know, that's why we don't have even more people playing. So, you know, there could be a lot of tweaks there. But Mulberry Mountain is such a, like, it's like a sacred place. Special. Yeah, it is special in itself. And I think our festival, I, I, I'm not looking to grow it bigger. I don't want it to be bigger. You want it to be more special. Yeah, and yeah. if I do something else, like I have some other ideas and we have a lot of offers to work with people. It's just, it has to be right. Do something with maybe, you know, a little more attendees. But I'm not trying to build a fucking tower. I'm trying to build a village. So Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, I like that right yeah, there. That's the analogy that's probably closest to my heart here. I love that one. Yeah. You know, so... I don't know. I don't. I think the festival is really neat the way it is. I think the lineup has been really good. Mm -hmm. We're working on that for next year now already. Comedy set, taboo comedy set. We definitely want that. Yeah. We definitely want to make that a lot bigger. And like, there are, I mean, obviously, like, I'm fully aware there's a lot of room for growth in terms of where you did that on the Halo stage. Like, we want, like, we want to set that up even better next year you know like a full panel kind of uh, during the daytime that it's more comfortable with maybe with couches and set up like a little better for you guys uh i don't know what do you think because uh, i'm all about getting I, feedback i from. thought it was so uh, the year one and year two of me doing comedy year two felt better because i was able to bring other comedians so it's like an actual comedy show it didn't feel like me just getting on stage and telling jokes how did you find those people i did comedy i've done comedy okay. with them for so years the, yeah and um i love those guys good comedian friends of mine i've yeah. been doing comedy th with them for years and um they're killers so i just wanted to bring them along so that felt better feeling like an actual comedy mm -hmm. show it was awesome doing it during the day because there's no music going on and people aren't fucked up yet so 
you know, doing comedy in New Orleans, I dealt with a lot of people who were fucked up. Mm -hmm. And so they want to like add and like hecklers. heckle. They're yeah. Little hecklers. Hecklers. Yeah, I exactly. Learned. And during the daytime, and the, I can't tell you how many people told me how amazing it was for them to start their day with laughter. Mm, I felt like that too. Yeah. What, how do you deal with hecklers? I fucking talk shit right back to them. Yeah. You got to beat them. You got to shut them down. Mm -hmm. You got to fucking, you got to heckle the hecklers. Yeah. You can't just let them walk it's over the same you. Same as a, it's a Swedish DJ. Yeah. Gonna go over them. But I like that it was before any music. Like kill them with kindness. It was cool because the, if people were there at the set, they were there for comedy because nothing else is going on. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was going on was comedy. And I like that. I don't want to change that. No, that's exactly how I'm thinking it too. I just want to, it to be even better infrastructure maybe longer yeah maybe longer sick. bring more comedians to help encourage people to bring some chairs how, how long so when you work on a set like comedian comedy set um what's your ideal length that you'd like to do you did half an hour yeah i did 35 minutes okay yeah i'm happy i'm comfortable with that that was a set that i was ready to nail it was 35 minutes of stuff that i was confident in mm -hmm. now if i had like longer than that it might be some stuff that I'm still working out that I'm not as confident in. Mm -hmm. So that's a good set. And how do you, how do you get your practice? Doing stand up. So you go to open mics, mm -hmm. and getting booked on shows, open mics, you know, all that stuff, whatever. Just practice, you know, you, you you don't know if a joke works unless you do it on people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way to do it. And I'll, even if you do it on one group of people, the second group, I mean, different. that's how it is DJing, you know, it's like, oh, this song usually goes off, but I guess. Yeah. I mean, I did comedy in New Orleans and some of the jokes I did in New Orleans don't work here in Denver. Dude, this tour has been so eye opening with that. Like I have, I got so much fresh music that most people don't have. And I make edits of everything I play, so I, you know, even your songs. Bro, are that edit different. you have is so dark is so good. Yeah, because it's paper planes by yeah, yeah. MIA, it's so hard. It's so hard. it hits you know in a different way, and there's a little, po but that like a lot of that shit. Uh, <laughs> Instead of playing those things on this tour, I've reverted to playing more simple and way older dubstep songs for a few sets because that's just what works. Yeah, it's fun too. You know, it's like Lost Lens Territory is like, oh, that's what they want. You know, they don't want these like weird hip hop edits that doesn't hit. You know? <laughs> So, is comedy like that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna too? sample you making that noise. Pyong, 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 pyong. I'm, pew, 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 pew. I'm sampling all this. <laughs> I'm sampling I'll see all you. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on your label, bro. <laughs> it's going Copyright on your label. Right infringement. It's my voice. No, you can sample me all you want. There we go. I'm just be grateful if someone did. I'm gonna. You think I won't? You think I'm is scared? Is comedy like that too, though? A little bit. Um, you sample real life shit. You don't sample other comedians. You sample things that are going on. My point was, is there a certain, and I don't want to say lowest common denominator, but is there like a safe zone that you can revert to with certain crowds? Yeah. As opposed to going like super weird so, spaghetti time, like you go full spaghetti time, or do you go, it's like rhythm. So like I'll go, I'll start out going full spaghetti time. Mm-hmm. And if it's hitting, I'm going to go even more. I'm going to go, I'm going to give them the longest noodles. Oh, they just like me. That's how I yep. DJ. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh shit, I've totally lost them. They're, just, yeah. they're, they're not on this train at all. I go back to, it's like, okay, well this, this is trial and tested. Yep. Yep. Here's some excision for you. Boom. You know? Exactly. It's but. just, it's just like that with comedy. Like I'll go out there and they're fucking with it. I'll keep going on that path. If, if I'm feeling the, you can feel a room get sour quick. You can feel, you know, if something doesn't hit, Oh yeah, you know, so then I'll, I'll bring it back to something I do know that that's, hits. That, that's training too. It's like knowing and feeling it, but also not get just like swallowed up by it. But it's like, Oh, Okay but I know what to do mm -hmm. or exactly. I don't know what I have even said that on the mic a couple of times during this tour. It's like, Hey, I don't feel like I figured you guys out, but trust me, I will. I'm, I'm gonna just try. I'm playing different tempos, different drops, different things. And eventually, Oh, okay. You'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. But I can see comedy being very much like that. It is. And also like maybe even politically, like you come to 
you know, a blue collar state, your uh, favorite, and then, yeah. you know, exactly. But then you come well, to, like, Trump territory, and what do you do then? Here's you know? what's crazy. So, like, my form of comedy coming out of here to Denver to doing it in a pretty, like, woke liberal city yeah it it's so different from the other comedians but it hits so hard because none of the other comedians are going that route i can see that yeah Good. so it works well in my favor just the racial comedy and in, in new orleans worked really well because we had a lot of black people what were they and, called the racial company racial comedy Oh. Like racial jokes. Like I had a lot of black people in New Orleans, the majority of the people, and those would crush there. But I come there and do some racial comedy here, and, and it's a bunch of white people. that are like, we don't know if we can laugh at that. So I stopped doing that here. Maybe that's why it's so important, though, I think. No, it is important. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes it won't out here. But in New Orleans, like if I had a black crowd, I was like, oh, it's how you, on. How do you feel about racism? Racism? Like in comedy or just in general? I mean, it's an open-ended question. If you're, if I'm racist, dude, I'm staying home. You know what I mean? Like, like, if I'm racist, I'm moving into bumfuck nowhere and just living by myself. You know what I mean? I mean, that's why they do it. But like, how do I feel about racism? It's dumb. Mm -hmm. It's really dumb because, like, we were going saying earlier, we're all the same. And then, we're same, same, di different, but same, same. And then I get same, same, but different lumped in. With this other thing that's called cultural appropriation, which I think is the dumbest term ever, because why shouldn't cultures inspire you? Inspire you, yeah. and you can share with other cultures. Like I'm Swedish, we invented Bluetooth, mm -hmm. but I think it's okay for you to also use Bluetooth. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, hip hop is definitely black music in terms of the performers, mm -hmm. but the microphone and the turntable was invented. You know what I'm saying? Where do you, it gets really dumb when you say, oh, you're not Italian? Why the fuck do you eat pasta? You yeah, it's, it's stupid. And so I think we have two different, it's like there is racism, but then there is also this virtue signal and cultural appropriate. Oh, you shouldn't, you know. But going back to what I said, that's not. Don't speaking Swedish because that's my shit. Yeah, but you know, I, go but how? Sorry, I'm sorry. You go ahead. But how dumb is that? Also, it, it's dumb, but it's also not real life. That's on the internet because you go in real life and you talk with people and you be around people and around other cultures. And we're melting pots where all these different cultures are together. That's just how people are. That's yeah. just normal living. And it makes it better. America is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. And I think Louisiana is very much like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I look at you as a Louisiana boy. Yeah, you can. I like that. Thank you. I like it too. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it's a very much a melting pot. It is. You know, it doesn't even feel like America. I mean, it does, but you know what I'm saying? It feels like the Caribbean a little bit. It, in a way, it feels like everyone going through the same struggle. Yeah. That's what I love about it. But, uh, yeah, I want to get to some questions real quick. I got to go piss. Oh, yeah. I don't get piss. Yeah, let's do a pee let's break. Do a pee. Wanted to get a question from Kyle now that we're back from the break. Kyle, you got anything you wanted to ask Mr. Stranger? Yeah, so um, earlier we touched on it a little bit about, you know, how sometimes negativity or when something, uh, you know, happens in your life that frustrates you or angers you or saddens you, it can shape you into a better person and you can learn from it. So I just had a question. Um, what is some advice you could give or how do you deal with negativity or like betrayal? If, if, you, if somebody betrays you, what is your process and how do you turn that into a lesson and learn, learn and grow from it? That's a good question. Yeah. I almost had the answer in it right there. You need to give it proper attention. It's all comes down to presence and in my case, sitting with it and making my own peace with it. It's very important. I think with these things too, to not forget about, like drown in all of it, you know, and lose yourself. So it all comes back to knowing who you are. And it's a lot easier for me today when I'm 44 years old than it used to be. Um, life usually starts with 28 years of extreme egocentrism where you're trying to, and I'm saying 28 years because that's according to Neuroscience, when the brain is fully formed and where you can realize the last thing that gets put into place is seeing the results of long-term consequences. If I do this now, how is this going to affect me a year from today, right? Um, I'm better at that today. 
the older you get, the older I've become, the less I allow myself to get caught up in superficial bullshit. Mm. But it's a journey. I think I any I think anything that frustrates me is worth for me to take a look at. If something sparks a reaction in me, that's probably something that I should look at. Mm. So I do. Mm-hmm. I'm an overthinker. I over uh, analyze everything. Something that's like if I ever get into conflicts with or arguments with Loper, who is my right hand, he's more than a manager for me. He's like one of my closest friends and you know, really like a right-hand man. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a psychologist for me. Too, a little sometimes. bit of a coach at times, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's because he would go, oh, Martin, you're totally overanalyzing this. And my response always, well, I over, I, I rather overanalyze it than underanalyze it. Mm. But that's my process. Is like sit with it and actually approach it and not be scared of it and get to the fucking point of it, mm. you know? Wow. That's Thank good. you. That's I good. don't know if that's even any, a good answer. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's that's good. great. Yeah, you got anything else for him, Kyle? Um, no, I think that'll do it for now. But thank you for uh, answering that question. I appreciate you. Cool. Don't yeah, you? man, we got to we had a lot of fan questions, but I narrowed it down. Don't you have any like really uh, confrontative questions? Because I love those confrontative questions. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Why are you so goddamn Swedish? You live in America, goddamn it. I know. That's. I'm trying to. I love America, by the way. Say it I'm again. Honored, Say it again. I'm, I'm honored to live here. I think America is the greatest nation on the planet. Yeah. Let's go. It's all these different cultures coming together, trying to. New Orleans is a very good example of that, but so is other places uh, where you have different cultures coming in and learning from each other. Mm. Obviously, I'm not a big fan since I'm adopted uh, into a Native American tribe. I don't uh, enjoy it that part so much and right. seeing their culture not thriving as much as it could do um, but all in all cultural appropriation is awesome as long as you don't take advantage of someone else true eating and pasta ins- wouldn't be one of them get inspired exactly the, don't I, steal I, yeah, no yeah yes yeah I mean, music is very much like, I think like my, my whole thing as a producer is that I've just mutated genres my entire life. I love African music. I love the island music, you know, Caribbean music, Jamaican, you know, usually mm. reggae, ska, mm. uh, the dub, um, which is more of a way of processing music than an actual music style. But like, it's one of the things that I enjoy the most about our culture today is how open it is. I mean, that's why I loved your, what do you call it? The pop album? Bulb, oh <laughs> Comedy record. Comedy record is yeah. what you call it. But Songs Your Wife Leaves You Too. It sounds, you know, it sounds like pop punk to me. At times, yeah. In, in a really good way. And it's yeah. a huge compliment because it's, you know, uh, it just shows how diverse you are as a producer. And I think that's a great example of, not uh, painting yourself into a corner mm. as a producer and also staying inspired, you know? And you're probably a little bit like me there because like 80% of what I make is down tempo. That's not necessarily reflected in my releases or what I play out because a lot of times at a show, people come to get fired up and vent. Mm, you leave know? It, and to leave it on the dance floor, like we mm-hmm. had said, yeah. Exactly. But... For myself to keep inspired, I need to go to other places, you know? And for me, that's the down tempo, the really weird stuff that I make. And for you, maybe that's the comedy. But it's like a good record. Yeah, that's, that's, that was my point. I wanted it to make I wanted to make it undeniably good, but also stupid. You know what I mean? Like like these the, the things I'm writing about, the songs that I'm writing are actually pretty dumb, but they're they're done undeniably well and that album was for me i didn't do that to please that i did that for fun i had i was having fun writing that record it was something inside of me that i wanted to create and it was just a fun little project and it meant a lot whenever you listen to it and you told me that you liked it i was like you thanks know, man you know the uh, recipe for success is supposedly unexpected but relevant you know you need to do something that's like relevant but also unexpected. Mm. 
So maybe that's what you're talking about a little bit there. Maybe. I wouldn't say dumb. It's though. it's dumb in a fun way. Okay. In a fun way. I remember whenever Loper and I first started working together, it was right Smart, in the beginning. Smart, dumb. Yeah, 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 that's good. Calculated, dumb. Yeah. Loper and I first started working together, it was in the very beginning. I was starting that album, and I just let him know. I was like, hey, I'm letting you know I'm, I'm doing this album. It's something I'm passionate about. It's something I'm doing. It's like, okay. And then I sent it to him, and in the, in the beginning, he didn't know. He was like, I don't know about this. And then he listened to it about two more times, and he hits me up. He's like, this is awesome. And I was mm -hmm. like, good. Now you get it. It's just for fun. It's nothing else other than fun. That's all it's for. I don't know if we should do more things like that. I'm going to I'm gonna do another comedy record. I already have ideas written down. Started on some some bass ideas on uh, producing, but it's going to happen at some point. Have you ever thought of recording some type of like comedy special? Yep. I'm going to do it at Wakan next year. Dude, I'll be so down. Like, let me know what you need, and I'll make mm -hmm. it good. We were supposed to do. I, I did, dude. But I mean, that's like, uh, I have such a reverence for comedy, mm -hmm. and I feel like I already harped on that for a long time. So it's all established. But mm -hmm. yes, I'm gonna do it at Wakan next year. We want a like a Wakan comedy special. Mm -hmm. We're not a record label. We're we're um, we're a portal that provides infrastructure. Or a, a share form culture, a charity for that. Yeah. It just happens to I'm a music producer, so we start there. But to be honest with you, I'd really like to see more of this. You know, have you seen all the cool things going on in the you know Unreal Engine five? I've been scanned into the metaverse now as like a four K character. Yeah, where, Neil was telling me about this. I mean, it's sick. Yeah, he never went. A, he never did it himself, but mm -hmm. I, I did. I met up with the Aiden, who's the guy who, who helps us with those kind of things. There's a whole world of cool things there mm -hmm. I want to do. We can get into that. A dude. comedy special would be one of them. I think comedy is extremely important. The it darker is. the world gets, the more comedy we need. Yeah, the darker the comedy, the better the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put I'll, it. I'll think about that mm -hmm. at night. Think about it. After the show. It's a good one. All right, later in fiddle <laughs> position. <laughs> Questioning my life. What other questions do you have? We got the... we got a fan question right here. Yeah. It's a good it. one. Yeah, what's up, man? It's Trip Fox from Lubbock, Texas. What up, Trip Fox? Uh, so, I got it's a, it's a little fun one today. Um, so, I want you guys to look at each other in the eyes. Get really, really intimate. And if you took music completely out of the question... What would you think each other did as an occupation? I don't know. I think it'd be kind of fun. Hell yeah. Y'all have a good one. Bye. I'm just getting lost in your beautiful oh eyes my, here. Oh, my God, dude. My fucking, my eyes are so wet right now. Photo model. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think it's pretty obvious what you do. You have this, like, kind face, but it's also very mischievous. I think... I think I have a little bit the same face. Like, it must be pretty mischievous. What would you have me doing if if you didn't know me? I, I, I was a comedian right away. Comedian? Yeah. All You're right. a comedian to me, and that's like the greatest compliment I could give you. I love that. All right, so you might not like mine as much, but it's honest. I see you as a lifeguard. I don't know why. I think it might be the headband. <laughs> it might be your <laughs> your silk skin, dude. Psychedelic life. Yeah, dude. You're fucking psychedelic. I would help people who got in too far out. Too in far into yes, yeah, yeah. into I limbo. That. Yeah, dude. And I was just like, so I was like, focus, focus on the pattern. Focus on the tiger. You're alive. Right you're here. here. You're alive. Yes. Come back. Get let yourself get swallowed up here. You're a lifeguard shaman. Wow. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Yeah, that does sound cool. You know that um, I have, um, I've never actually talked about this on camera, but I do have this ring uh, that I was given by my mentor. And his ring said 10 on the inside. And he I was the yeah. Nagol. Mine says 11. So I'm supposed to be a shaman lifeguard <laughs> for people. That's amazing. But instead, I'm out here playing Guarding silly bass people. music for teenagers. <laughs> so sometimes I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? And then it clicks to, it's like, no, it's, it's pretty profound. Like, and we are giving people a, a safe space to vent and to get blown out of their normal, uh, maybe sedentary uh, lives. But there's a lot of um, thoughts in my mind about, this heritage that I'm 
because this is a warrior order sworn to protect women and children. And I resonate very, very strongly with that. As you should. And uh, so that's what I aspire to be. You know, I dress funny and I speak funny and I make silly music, but behind there is actually a very clean intent. Mm. I think it's the same for you. This is a lot so of bravado and bolsters and you're very like funny, but under that I see a person who's actually a healer, you know? I like that. Let's not blow too much smoke up nope. each other's asses. No, 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 no. That's but the last to... thing Mitch needs. <laughs> <laughs> I stay pretty humble, dude. Fuck you, Kyle. <laughs> I try to, man. You're but, very humble. Yeah, dude. What's your fucking psychedelic lifeguard looking ass? You know what I'm saying? I like that. That's a fun question. But uh, Martin. What else? That's it. That's just it? Yeah. Because you're too busy. Too busy. It's literally what it is. You have a show to play. I know. And I go on a lot earlier than you. And I got to pick up my old lady. So this is it. You do. But you also know the opposite. The, I have this whole lineup. Like the lineup today is insane. Mm -hmm. The whole you know, weekend. Do you the know what weekend. I have to go and do after that? Make a better lineup? No, I have to go on after all these people. There's my favorite producers. It's you, it's, you know, I'll kill the noise, fucking legend. Um, but also, like, the very first guy playing tonight is Drink Your Water. Mm. Mm, Kevin Flom. Have you heard his fucking shit? You know my song, insane. you know my song Times 2? Yeah. That's him rapping on it. Yeah, he is insanely skilled, that yeah. guy. It just I, uh, keeps me on my fucking toes. So, after that, I have to go up tonight and play a throwback set, which is kind of similar to me, like, hey, let me show you some paintings I did when I was three years old. Like, all the songs I'm going to be playing tonight are 15 years old or older. The fans are going to love it. I'm going to love it. I didn't even know what a sidechain compressor was <laughs> back in that day. It's, oh, it's my like, God. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, dude, I believe you, man. It was only feeling. It's like, yeah. So, that's how That makes for the best art, though. Um, I've been second guessing. I've worked really hard on this set. Was this the hardest set of the weekend? Yeah. All right, I'm oh, excited yeah. for it. By far. I'm very excited for it. To kind of keep it like fresh, also representative, listening to all the fans, because I still read what people write me. Mm -hmm. I just don't always respond, but uh, I've seen a lot of requests. I got them. Except the controversial collabs that I've decided in my heart of hearts that I'm just going to retire. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing them anymore, because I don't want to make, even if I make 100 people happy and five people just like, Oh my God, I can't believe I care about those five people. Here's the thing. In a sense, Is that, that right? What do you think about that? I think that's comedy in a sense. doesn't matter if I'm doing comedy at WakanFest or at a comedy club. There's going to be that percentage of people who are unhappy with something I say, mm -hmm. and you have to live with that. Yeah. I think in a sense that's comedy. Like It's literally like, like I have to come to terms with I'm not going to please everyone. I don't want to please everyone. I want to please myself and everyone else that's happy with it. Let's go. Well- and, Fortunately, in terms of those collabs, I have a lot of other songs I can play. So True. I have a feel lot like of music. in that sense, it's not like I'm not like giving up a part of my own like integrity by not playing it. It's maybe just like saving a few people from not being pissed. That's true. And the rest are probably going to be happy enough. It's 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 a different it's it's different in its own way. Like com like comparing that to like a stand up. Like with me knowing I'm going to upset some people. Yeah. You know, like because I had some jokes at Wakanda Fest that were like towards some of the cancel culture people, the people who got canceled. And there's people in the crowd who were like massive fans of those people who hated. This is the thing. They already hated me going into it, and they, they just didn't like me as it continued. Got to talk about it, though. Yeah, absolutely. And comedy is the best way to do it. It's healing, probably even for the people who are in the um, denial. storm. In denial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is where we're capping this dude martin listen maybe you can come on the wakan tv podcast i'd love to man i'll be in that. oklahoma city uh in december okay i'll have a date for you and we'll we'll get her awesome. done i'll be home that would be awesome good we'll do it yeah martin before we get out of here i just want to say thank you not just for coming on here today this this means a lot for you coming on here i feel like this is something that i've wanted the fans have wanted, this is something you're normally comfortable with. And I appreciate you stepping out of your comfort zone for me and for the people. And I appreciate, I'm trying to get emotional here. I appreciate all the things you've done for me and for you being you. The world's a way better place, better place because you're here. 
and I'm a better person because of you. Dude, thanks so much. And I feel the same. You're a shining star, Mitch. And I love you. I love you, man. Thank you so much, man. For real. Love is the answer. It is. You're an angel. Anything you want to let the people know before you get out of here? No. Good. <laughs> I, don't know, I love it. Gangster, dude. <laughs> no, mic drop. You should punch my mic and then hit me and Kyle. That'd I feel be... like it was pretty extensive. And at this point, I'm just like, I don't even know. Was this any good? Like, this was amazing. It was fantastic. This is one of the most, this is going to hold a special place in my heart forever. Awesome. Well, I feel the same. It's super easy to talk to you, and I'd love to do it again. Yeah, me too. And we'll keep uh, keep trucking in the free world. Absolutely. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, I want to say you, thanks to all the people still supporting. Like, hey, I've been doing this for a very long time. Some of my fans have come and seen me play like over 40 times. Like, you know, I have yeah. some hardcore fans. And that they're still showing up. It's like that's special to me. So I want to say thank you to the community. That's given me this conviction to just keep on pressing in this culture that I love so much, but I wouldn't be anywhere. You can't exist in a vacuum. So thank you sincerely. I fucking love the Wakam fam. The best. Yeah. The best. And thank you for, thanks for being part of it. Thank you for allowing me in this family, man. I feel, I feel, I I feel accepted and I feel, I feel welcomed. That means a lot. You are. It means a lot. So thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate thank you, buddy. Man. Thank you, Kyle. And I, thank um, you. I appreciate everybody listening to this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. I will see you all next week. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. I mumbled that. Peace.